Hi everyone, welcome to our new video series. My name is Jan Gustafsson and I'm thrilled to be reunited with fellow Magnus Carlsen's trainers, seconds, Peter Heine Nielsen, Magnus Carlsen's head coach and Laurent Fressinet, Magnus Carlsen's French coach, are both here and we will be going through the World Championship match 2021. Our experiences with it, the games, what we prepared, where we felt things went well, where we felt things didn't go well. Peter, we have different perspectives because we were in different locations. Very much. I'm looking forward to talking to you guys about it because you were in Thailand during all the match and I was in Dubai with the Magnus and the you know, his non-chess team. So I see some kind of debriefing where we will discuss what was the mood in Dubai, what was happening in the technical department in Thailand and we got to sort of basically compare notes and uh, yeah, get the two kind of inside looks uh, from the match. Very much so. And Laurent, we are actually in your private home. Thanks for having us. It's a big pleasure to, to welcome both of you and I'm sure it will be interesting to talk to you guys about the match. Likewise. So we hope you guys enjoy the series with our behind the scenes insights. <laughs> See you then. Okay, so let's send a challenge. Ah, here he is challenging. Nice graphics, easy to see. Oh, what are you thinking about? You're looking how it can be the most painful? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. fine. <laughs> that I give him up a phone. He wants to be even rude. E5, it's E5, Patsers. A complete repertoire against 1E4, based on 1E5, now available to study with Chessable's unique move trainer technology. The backbone is the Marshall Gambit against the Spanish, with three Knight F6 against the Italian. Jan Gustafsson has revisited all these lines he has played for 20 years and worked on as a second for Peter Lecco and Magnus Carlsen, amongst others, with the help of the most powerful engines out there, Leela Zero and Stockfish 10. This has led to many new discoveries and a repertoire ready to master on Chessable that can serve the student for a long chess career. Maybe E4 doesn't exist after all. E5, it's E5, Patsers. When I saw her for the first time, it was love at first sight. I love how rich and complex she is, how sharp and principled her first steps, how graceful her movement. Paris is a city of love.
I've come to find my love. For the French defense. Hi, I'm Grandmaster Judith Polgar, and I'm here to welcome you in the chessable classroom. It combines a shared chessboard with live video. Teachers get to interact on the chessboard with their students and even run quizzes and tournaments. I really love what Chessable Classroom can offer. I use it myself all the time. Just invite students to your classroom and start teaching right there. No downloads needed, and it's for free. It's time to take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board to remember which page you're on or keep track of all the moves you miss. Move Trainer empowers you to go from the opening to the end game with confidence. It's a seamless, effective, and fun way to study chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive Chessable courses, including over 100 free courses. Get expert insights from International Master John Bartholomew, Grandmaster Sam Shankland, International Master Christoph Sulecki, Grandmaster Simon Williams, World Champion Magnus Carlsen, and hundreds of other instructors. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts at chessable.com. Chessable, take control of your journey towards chess mastery. I'm ahead of the game. up my rocket but follow me i'm ahead of the game i'm ahead of the game i'm a lonely ever slinging i'm working over time got the song and i'm the sing with the melody the vibe i'm a prodigy logically i'm impossibly wanted then they'll remember my name they'll remember my name i'm ahead of the game i'm ahead of the game John. John loves to study chess. This is David. David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. John spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of his book than he gets to study. David likes to take it easy and use his time wisely. David has finished his exercise for today. John should try the same. Welcome, everybody. My name is Yanni Pomnishi, former World Chess Champion. Are starting a new course here for Chessable? A very special Chessable course. Master your chess with Judith Bolgar. You know what? I learned a lot. Thank you. 
Hello, everybody. Welcome to the semi-finals of the final FIDE Grand Prix. There is all to play for. And by all, I mean the winner of this very Grand Prix, because we already know who is qualifying for the candidates. But Peter Svidler, that shall not distract us from having a fun evening of chess. Not, yeah. And yeah, congratulations to, to Richard Oppert and, uh, and Hikaru, uh, of course, uh, the only two people who uh, managed to win their groups, uh, their groups twice, uh, which is no mean feat considering the fields. And uh, it's very understandable that they are the two who are progressing. Would you say that they face very strong, worthy opponents and therefore it's a great achievement? Absolutely, I would say that, but now I can't say that because you said that. So, well. Just getting it on the record. And here we see the current field for the candidates Nipomnashi, Rajabov, Duda, Ali Reza. Do we say Ali Reza or Firuja? I feel like it's, it's like Beyonce. He's Ali Reza, right? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Dodgy has done so much. So much to push the the Ali Reza narrative that it is now going to be Ali Reza for the rest of time. He is the Ali Reza, Caruana, Rapper Nakamura, the two latest qualifiers, and TBD. TBD is a very strong Chinese player. Yes, stands for the best thing. Yes, <laughs> very strong Chinese player. Uh, we have liftoff. We absolutely have liftoff, and by liftoff we mean it's a it's a Petrov, which is a glorious, glorious news for all of us. Liftoff uh, Petrov. Yes. We should mention that these are the semifinals where Hikaru Nakamura is facing Mamed Yarov. Wesley So is facing Tabatabai. Nakamura is the only one of these four who is qualified. No one else stands a chance, no matter how this tournament ends. But the tournament still has to be played out. Why not capture this pawn? No particular reason he has captured it, yeah. Uh, Did you have to study the, the Stafford Gambit? Like, has this reached the Swidler household? Or study is strong? Did you study, have to address no, but it? I have, I have discussed it with, uh, uh, with people. And I have, I think, I faced it a couple of times in Simul's, but study, no. I, I believe don't. Eric Rosen, Nigel, short tweeted this, and I think he's right. He's done. Banter blitzes and simul givers all over the world. Such a favor by making this opening so popular. Because it's... it is, it is a fair remark. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's a fair remark. But honestly, uh, you know, considering the, the the actual game we're watching, oh, no, we're we're in for a short <laughs> work day at least on this board. Yeah, this board really does not look very promising. And and honestly, it's very very difficult to begrudge Hikaru not wanting to you know over overextend himself considering his work here is done pretty much i mean there's there's a chunk of money still uh still on the table and obviously he would like to win two legs that would be like if he wins both legs he played in that would be quite something it already is extremely impressive considering he's been kind of dormant for for two years in terms of playing over the board chess and classical chess in particular and and to just waltz in and qualify with seemingly with ease is already very impressive but if he wins both legs it will be quite remarkable but on the other hand if he if he just trades everything and offers a draw move 30 today i don't think very many people will feel cheated out of anything he could do that and still win both legs it's absolutely like he's yeah trying to then, lose these semifinals he's just trying to get exactly yeah. just yeah i mean he he feels his black repertoire is very solid also, people occasionally win these positions with white. It had like we. This is not a draw yet, and I have seen I have seen people people get a little bit of something. In particular, there is this like weird interplay where, as as somebody playing this on the black side, you think, okay, this is a draw for, and you stop thinking about moves, and then by move fifteen you realize it hasn't actually been a draw for, and white actually means to play, and you're already slightly worse. And yeah, I've seen I've seen people lose important games like this. I think uh, Surya Ganguly once won a very once won a very important last round game in a like a major open. You probably will be able to remember which open I. Some it's the only the only open I'm familiar with. Was it open Wang Hao? Yeah, I think yeah. He he basically he he played this uh, you know an absolute must win game in the last round with White, and by the time his opponent realized yeah draw for is not on the table. It, it really, really wasn't available anymore. Uh, but the feeling is Hikaru is not really in the mood today to, to push very hard if Black doesn't go crazy. 
Yeah, let's just briefly explain what happened. Knight takes e5, d6, knight f3, knight takes e4. This is one of the, if not the main starting position of the Petrov here. The series tries start with pawn to d4 or knight to c3. Sometimes you see pawn to d3, but queen e2 very much forces black to exchange queens because you don't want to lose this piece. So you have to go queen to e7, d3, knight to f6. Now bishop g5 can't claim. I'm much of an expert here, but this is the more peaceful move as well. I think, no, I think yeah. knight c3 is the more combative choice and what I believe Ganguly has played in that game you mentioned, if I'm not mistaken. So bishop g5 threatening to take here. Black could play knight bd7, but yeah. it doesn't achieve that much. And Mohamed Yarov says, you know what? I'll keep it simple, take bishop e7. White has a minor lead in development, but with the structure being symmetrical and not much going on. It is, of course, very George. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, the, 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 the uh, emphasis will be very much, unless something drastic happens here, will be on the second game here, which uh, is Wesley playing white against Amin Tabatabai, which is uh, very much a story uh, in and of itself. I mean, qualifying from that group by beating uh, Anish with black pieces in the last round in a very, very impressive game where Anish, it didn't seem really like he did very much wrong in a quiet Joko Piano. He did and then go he just... rook a3 and then rook back to a1. Yeah, I mean, the he... opening, which was weird. But, yeah. Obviously, you don't lose without making some mistakes, but it looked like, yeah, he probably played some optimally and doesn't have any advantage, but turned out he, you know, not having an advantage was the least of his problems. He just kind of got absolutely bludgeoned to, uh, to into submission by, by a very nice kind of a positional peace sacrifice. I mean, at least it started off as being a positional peace sacrifice. A very, very impressive game by Amin. Let me put it on the board. Yeah. Or... Yeah, somewhere on here, he, Machine, I think, thought he was still kind of okay. But yeah, he probably misevaluated Knight GF4 check because it doesn't actually give mate immediately. It, it is a kind of a slow burn. You you aren't immediately losing, but your pieces are so discoordinated that the Knight on H3 just stays on H3, creating threats for the rest of the game. And uh, it's yeah, a... I was very impressed because it, it's not intuitive. Absolutely, to yeah. that black is winning here, or even better, to dare to mm -hmm. do this and yeah. to correctly evaluate it. Yeah. Just checkmate, checkmate Anish. Doesn't happen every day. Absolutely. What do we know about Mr. Tabatabai? He played two of these now. I think he scored 50% and one plus one in the next. That's pretty good for a 2623 player, given the rest of the field is, I don't know, 2750 average. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, Iranian youngsters are. Just strong, like he's just a youngster to us. He's not. Yeah, that young. I, I, I understand, but still, like uh, it's it's just this new generation of, of Iranian players who are just very very good, and uh, I, I I know very little. Uh, I have zero personal experience. I don't think I've played him ever uh, personally. I've watched him play quite a bit, and uh, it seems like maybe once again I'm basing it on one game in particular that I remember quite distinctly that I think he ended up losing to Kirill Alexeyenko in, in Riga, uh, where they played an absolutely mad game in which, in the end, I think time management was what decided the game. So I have a feeling that uh, the reason he is 26-23 and not, I don't know, 26-90 is perhaps sort of the practical side of things. Maybe, you know, time management could be improved. I don't know, perhaps opening knowledge might, might be not up to, I don't know, 2700. Uh, strength yet, but I've I've always been kind of impressed by him. I thought he I, I've I was not shocked that he is doing well here, even though the, the he he was an underdog in both of his groups. Yeah, let's have a look at the game. Wesley so needs no introduction. He's not going to make it to the candidates, which is sad for him. He only played once, I believe, in twenty eighteen, and it went horrible. Um, but he's been a very world-class player, at least since 2015. In 2016, everyone had this debate, who's a stronger player, Wesley or Magnus, when Wesley won like three, four tournaments in a row and was also number two in the world. Since then, yeah, he hasn't established himself as number two, but he's a very stable top 10 presence. Just Absolutely, like, yeah. Wrong, great player. Yeah. That's oh, why he likes this. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah no, I, but missing out once again, yeah, and it's... Uh... 
um, it's it's surprising considering the the, the caliber of a player that he is that he's only played one one candidate so far. This opening, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the mic. I have no idea what's happening. It's kind of weird so far. This is what we call the Queen's Gambit declined. Um, usually, when people play this move order, at least at the highest levels, it's signaling that they want to play the Nimzo Indian, which last time I checked, still a great re reputation. Although it took some hits, at least results-wise, in White Ganze recently, where White won like five games and I think lost one in the Nimzo. But what Tabatabai does is he's saying, I will play d5 no matter what you do. Allow this Karlspa structure. That's how we call the structure, so cd5, ed5. And I've noticed he does this regularly with one particular thing in mind. Thing we might have done. Commentary on this when he played this line against Vitugov, where c6, e3 was played, and he plays this very mm. direct move, bishop f5. Which, if black can get away with this, play knight bd7 or bishop e7 next without mm -hmm. anything hanging, he straight up equalizes because this bishop gets out. So why does it try to punish this by queen b3 or queen f3? And yeah, it seems, because I've checked, he's played this at least three, four, five times in tournament games recently. They just believe this is fine for black. Mm -hmm. And apparently, Wesley shares that belief, or at least didn't feel like debating this endgame. Because he goes for the other main move here, queen to c2, trying to stop bishop to f5, at least, for the moment. Now black has a bunch of options. I'm slightly surprised by this choice of bishop e6. Although maybe maybe I shouldn't be. Maybe it's just a new thing. Like old school would be some move like g6. Pre pretend to play bishop f5 anyway. Or to say, okay, you put your queen on c2. I'll go bishop e7 and switch to a setup with... Line yeah, this I think would be an achievement, right? Although, yeah, this line exists. Yeah, this line exists. I was about to say, you know, getting a kind of a classical, classical cow's bot where nothing comes off the board easily is an achievement for white, but some things do come off the board here. Yeah, yeah, no, you, you don't get that. That's sorry. I, I like speaking at length about cow's bot structures because I have no friends. Um, so the thing is, if you, let's say, play this move order, White usually doesn't play queen c2 here anymore because it allows this knight h5, which has a very, very solid reputation. And here they often start with a move like h3, specifically designed to keep the queen here for a moment and make, make black a move to stop this knight h5. And now black can castle or play whatever. But you don't have that option if you want to avoid this e3 bishop f5 line, which was played frequently by Tabatabai. Therefore, Wesley. Yet to commit to this. Um, and yeah, I think this is still a valid choice. But Tabatabai goes for bishop to e6, followed by knight bd7, which is a setup that I associate with. I'm not sure if this is how you get it regularly with these lines. a6 exactly, became yeah. a thing. And here it's very common to play bishop e6, knight bd7. Maybe they're just thinking, you know what, if we can do this with a6, maybe it's even better without a6. Yeah. Uh, I also immediately connected it specifically with the with the rise of the a6 uh, uh, a6 lines because yeah it's uh, it feels weird to to my eyes to play bishop b6 so early. What is even weirder in a way is uh, the position they have on the board right now. I, I would like to like if somebody could tell me that the, that this is theory, my my world would kind of immediately make a little bit more sense because I have no idea how they got to this position so quickly. I'm out of book here. As much Kaspar knowledge as I like to fake, especially six, nine, B seven. I've never looked at. They are playing quickly though. Yeah, and they're I mean, following some game. Exactly. Like the, the position, uh, they are at move seventeen right now, uh, with like barely 15, 15 minutes into the game. The position seems completely random to me, and some decisions have already taken don't look obvious at all. So yeah. F3 for starters looks far from obvious, like you could are justify you, you, it, it's a setup you want, but... Are you, are you actually worried about g5, knight h5, maybe? I think so. Is mm. this why why you don't play bishop d3 immediately? I would really think so. Also, once again, from this a6 knowledge, where this is a common mm -hmm. idea. Yeah. So he's trying to stop that. Plays f3, bishop goes to d6, bishop d3, and now c5. Yeah, c5 played instantly, all of this... Uh... 
I guess maybe F3 is kind of recommended against this setup. And, uh, you know, the way the way people reach these types of positions seemingly by mutual agreement is very often is just an indication that this is what the machine likes. And they both actually prepared for the game today. You know, shock horror, people doing work on chess before an important tournament game. Yeah, more often than not. If it hasn't been played recently, then it's just first computer line. Which is fair enough. C5 one can explain, typically, in these F3 structures, you don't want to give white 10 tempi and then have them start thinking about E4 instead. You try to bother. White here early, knight G2. Now, if CD, you go ED, right? That's probably still probably yeah. unpleasant. Probably. Hmm. Doesn't look like much, but white controls these squares a bit better than black does. The bishop on A6 is just very stupid. We play bishop G3 yeah. and, and try to play knight of 4 after the bishops come off and you... You claim that your light pieces are just better placed than your your opponents. Therefore, Tabatabai decides to push further. Go c4. Bishop only has one square. Castles, castles. Queen e8. Yeah. Also, an interesting kind of a little little bit of uh, interplay here. Queen e8, seemingly. Uh, well, obviously, unpinning the knight on f6 is probably the main reason we play this move, but you also seemingly try to create some play along the e-file. But then after Wesley trades on e6, you don't actually take with the queen. So uh, I guess it's just a good square for the queen. It controls the g6 square, which might become useful later because the queen on c2 might be looking in that direction in some lines. Did unpin and yeah, where where could it go here? Queen c7 knight b5. Queen 7 knight b5, yeah, yeah but I like awkward. I could make an argument for just playing a6 here or rook c8 or yeah. whatever. Yeah. yeah, a6 looks fairly <clears throat> natural. I don't know if e4 is a nah, exactly. I think it, you, you probably so theme yeah. takes an e4. Right? Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to have queen h5 in that position, for instance. Like one one justification I could think of is you 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 might want to have to be able to play queen h5 or queen g6 after e4, whichever one you like better. Do like this one. Uh, yeah, and Wesley, yeah, clearly switches to to playing on the queen side here because if Black achieves a six and b five, the structure starts looking very, very double edged, and in fact, you maybe even start preferring it for 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 Black car in in some cases. Sure. So, uh, so Wesley goes very hard at trying to stop that from happening. Goes a four. Also, it looks like they both made, or at least Black made some random moves, but it's actually very direct play. Yeah, Queen E8 mm -hmm. to stop the threat of E4. Now A6, B5, as you mentioned, very much a threat, so you do something about it. A4, A6, B3. Rook two, no, the, the moves look the moves looks lo look logical, but they aren't really you know forced necessarily. I I understand what you're saying about it being very direct, but. Yeah, normally you see people spend a little bit more time on these decisions. Yeah, yeah no, I'm not saying they're they're not in book. It's not yeah. like it's obvious moves that they're being blitzed out. Yeah, and and finally there is a pause, even though Rook AB1 continues looking extremely logical, uh, as did many of the previous decisions. And uh, I'm kind of liking this for White with this uh, A4 B3 kind of switch of uh, switch of pace and switching the uh the direction of play from let's say center and king side which is what white i think normally does in the cows buds when you play the the positions with f3 where you're trying to push for e4 uh but now there's a somewhat backward pawn on b7 which needs to uh be paid attention to i mean it's currently hanging i don't know what's the move even like b6 i think it's kind of ugly but i have b6 so maybe you take and play b6 it's very very annoying though I'm not really liking this very much for for I mean I don't know if we're even taking with the queen. I I kind of like taking with the rook and then maybe putting the queen on b3 on d3 if you play b6 to be even. Ah oh, no, if there's rook c4. Sorry, yeah, I, I don't know why I'm provoking rook c4. I thought I was being very clever by pushing against the pole queen pawn on a6, but I'm not. But it seems like white should be a bit better. Which once again then brings us to the question: Why would he blitz into this if it's not good? Or maybe he just didn't expect Wesley to have this level of knowledge and cunning in some, what looks like a random sideline. Yeah, it does look. Uh, it does look like Wesley was extremely well prepared. Probably. I looked it up. This is, position has only been played once. Some game Lupulescu against Daniel Friedman, but it's not mm. exactly like mainstream. Oh well, it's a it's a game between two strong players at least. Yes, yeah, so. Not invisible, so to speak. 
and uh, we're being, correct. Yeah, we're being told that uh, uh, Queen C7 instead of uh, Queen E8 was played in a in a correspondence game, which I mean these days oh, stands for computer science. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I guess you can still play it here because Bishop takes H2 is a good reply to Knight B5, but and then I guess Queen C6 or Queen B6 or something. Yeah. Um, so what do we do? Can we play some cunning move like King H1? Probably, yeah. Probably. Even though, smart when it is. Honestly, I don't I don't really hate the idea of just trading the bishop's hole as well. Just going bishop g3 and taking with the pawn and although I don't know. Maybe that makes Black's life easier. Yeah, dislike that pawn. Yeah, dark mm. that's hard to say. Yeah, I don't not not great. Not great. Okay, looks like we will get action in this game at the very least. Clearly, Wesley is not trying to play it safe. He's just trying to get an edge. Mm -hmm. uh, a question from Phantomas Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, can you explain why correspondence games are such a great source for opening preparation rather than hitting space and analysis mode? Well, I mean, it's it's basically somebody has already done that for you. Uh, Typically, he's let his engine run combined with deep individual analysis, of course, but let his engine run for at least a couple hours, if not days in the position. Well, typically, if you're clicking, you you let your engine run for a couple minutes, which nowadays with our super strong engines is still fairly reliable. So I'm not sure if you feel that way. To me, I thought correspondence games were incredibly important some years ago, like 2016-ish, uh, because they would often be so far out of theory with engines having gotten so strong. Um, to me, it looks like the results are often very similar if you do your own clicking and look at correspondence games, but you can just you know build a tree and you will see a lot of good moves without even having to click. So that's- Yeah, I will, I will definitely trust you on this because you've done, uh, you've done a lot more, uh, I think sort of serious responsible work on openings uh, uh in in recent years than me do you know due to your uh <laughs> tie vacations uh but i think there's i'm assuming you mean my triumphs in the bangkok open and not the world championship matches or both yeah both. they're definitely not ignoring your triumphs in the in the bangkok open that would be sure. uh uh but what i wanted to say is I think there's still a very good indication of sort of trends of what machines like. You might not be using specific games as, as you know, the guiding light necessarily, but uh, you can still look at uh, like if if humans aren't playing something and machines are playing a lot of it, that would be an interesting kind of a thing to pay attention to. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm a not a very proficient user of uh, of those databases, and uh, I would defer to your judgment. No, I agree with the point. But as you say, of those databases, there to get an indication of what machines like, you might as well look at computer game databases, which most people mm -hmm. have as well. Because correspondence, often you get the news a year or two late because they they take so long to finish their games, right? So that that is also probably nowadays not a year or two, but it's not as <laughs> Up to date as yeah. random engine games played on the internet. Yeah, uh, yeah, and engine games in particular are also yeah, yeah. You you don't have to follow them blindly, but they they might indicate trends which you could otherwise uh, otherwise miss. Um, Often so. it's also stupid, like it's some line where the computer says zero twenty and it ends in a draw. So you have to filter those out because yeah. engines don't, of course. But they're they're getting better and better. Um, oh. Okay. Not saying that Wesley somebody. is Wesley is uh, absolutely on the next level today because he is still gaining time on the clock while playing Bishop before Bishop before Bishop B one here. This is this is quite something. So he expected this position to happen, and he blitzes out what we're assuming the best move, Bishop yeah. to E one, because the the little bar you can see next to the analysis window also seems to. Ah, can you see it? Yeah, you can see it below the mm. evaluation. Um, also seems to indicate that this is the way. Yeah. And I mean, Wesley being good, well prepared is 
not really news. But Wesley's being very well prepared in this line is still kind of remarkable considering how how completely off bit all of this appears to be. Yeah, I'm not sure if he has other sources of information. Maybe Tabatabai plays this line in Blitz games on his secret mm. yeah. secret internet account, which Wesley has has found out. We don't know. Sometimes these things happen, but more likely he just works diligently on chess and he thought, okay, I'm going to go for this Queen C2, which will be 6, 9, 8, 7. Let's click a bit. Impressive mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. And actually, I, I under, you, you were probably mainly tongue in cheek, but people, yeah. do, people do check like databases of Blitz games these days. This is very much a legitimate source of... Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And it's not impossible that that this actually happened in some in some I mean games on on servers and uh, Wesley paid attention. Bishop to you one. What's the point? I'm not entirely sure. I thought because like the knight on c three wasn't really under much pressure, um, and knight takes d five is not a threat. For instance, is knight e four maybe a threat? I mean, threat is a very strong word. Threat is a very strong word for an idea. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like, I mean, it can be ignored it's in like... Not losing a piece. Yeah. It can be ignored in 10 different ways, yeah. Or possibly refuted by tactical means as well. I don't know. I'm too too, too, too indifferent to calculate. I guess it just wasn't doing much on h4, and he's claiming supporting knight on c3. It is actually doing something there. And please make a move. Uh, because uh, the assumption is black eventually gets the rook to, to, to the c4 square. Uh, and if Wesley manages to provoke c takes b3 followed by rook c4, he definitely gains quite a lot of time compared to b takes c4, rook takes c4. Uh, so he is very much inviting Amin to make the trade if the trade is to happen. Oh, so here we can take with the queen. Oh, so then we yeah. might have some. Knight Which takes d5 shenanigans. Yeah. Knight d5 might actually be working quite well here, yeah. Absolutely. I don't know how it ends, it, but it looks... Rook f takes e1, I think, solves it quite simply. Yeah, We just sidestep the fork, because here you lose material to queen before. You just don't you don't eat enough, enough pieces. And if you try taking on e1 first, the rook just avoids the fork. No fork. No fork. Far from force line, but just yeah. trying to figure out some some tricks. So what does black do? It's also not obvious what goes where, is it? Like A5, we're not eager to play, I'm assuming. Not really, no. I, I don't think giving up the B5 square is very high on the agenda. I mean, something like Queen E7 or Queen... I guess, I mean, if, if the queen goes anywhere, it probably goes to this square because f7 looks artificial and also supporting the bishop on b4 might be a useful thing in the future. Once again, preparing for the eventual uh, arrival of the rook on c4 to support it by the second rook to c8. Just connecting rooks for the future. Doesn't really do very much, but you know, if, if I were to nominate a waiting move, that would be the waiting move I I would choose. I'm also kind of constantly wondering if e6, e5 is playable in some positions, but it's probably way too early. Um, I kind of like the idea of landing the knight on d3 if d5 happens, but then I will have to take on c4 with the rook, not the pawn, so probably it never lands on d3, and it ruins my structure. But it's the only pawn break available to black in this position, so my mind is kind of drawn to it a little bit, but I suspect it just doesn't work out tactically. Speaking of drawn, how's the other game going? Very nicely done. It's it's ongoing, yeah. They C5, have... C4. Yeah, 17 moves to go. What are the rules? No draw for us before move 30? I think so, yeah. I'm being a bit sort of blasé about this, but the expectation really is that uh, Hikaru is taking it easy today and he will rely on his extremely, extremely solid repertoire to make a draw tomorrow or win if Shah overpresses. And he is obviously very fine with playing rapid tie breaks, even though Shah is not going to be a rollover in rapid tie breaks. 
Were you watching uh, yesterday? I was very, very impressed by by Young Vincent yesterday. I didn't he... watch it live. I clicked through mm. the games, and yeah, from a German perspective, of course, a pity that he didn't make it to these semifinals. But what what an event! I mean, he just finished high school, and yeah, to to make it to these tie race score plus one against these people and defeat Mamed Yarov in a must win game. Almost did pity it for him. He lost, but yeah. Almost did very it. Impressive. He came very close to doing it again with in the blitz game after losing with white. He almost he almost beat Shah with black. Uh, made one kind of fatal mistake in a winning position. Uh, very very impressed. I mean we've we've known for a while that he is a he is a very very big talent. But still, this is kind of yeah. This was next level. <laughs> yeah, we're we're seeing we're seeing results that we we have not really seen from him before. Um, so yeah, impressive. Yeah, not much to say about this position, I guess. I'm always impressed with the confidence if Nakamura is saying, you know what, I want to take it slow today, I want to make a draw against the Petrov. I will just play a quiet line and make 30 moves and then make a draw. Because if it was me, I would be looking for ways to, yeah. to force the issue here yeah. and shake hands and go home. And in there particular, are plenty of ways in yeah. the Petrov if you want one. In particular, because uh, I think Shaq plays Bishop D6 lines. Where yeah, exactly. you don't even have to shuffle, you can very easily find absolutely Play any any theory mainline and yeah, shake yeah. hands if you want to. Yeah. There's plenty here. There is this absolutely forced draw that I made against Sasha in in the European clubs uh, last year, and and plenty other options as well. Yeah. But uh, then again, yeah, we we, we do have to. Uh, also, so maybe his idea of. Taking a little break is not preparing a force draw against the Petrov for five hours. Like maybe yeah, exactly, yeah. he's wired differently there. Yeah, he probably doesn't really feel that you know the the danger of him losing this position was very high. So yeah, yeah that's what I mean. <laughs> yeah, he is very happy just playing it for for an hour and a half and then and then not playing it anymore. All right, yeah, there's not too much to say about it. The position is still very close to symmetrical. Mm. We'll jump in if drastic events yeah. occur. And the, I'm yeah. not quite sure what what all this white setup is about, really, after Bishop E6. But I guess yeah, I've been trying to figure out. out. I've been trying to figure out what the idea was. Maybe you can play D3, D4 somewhere. Maybe even immediately here. Actually, it works, right? We can go D4 and then Knight B5 later, and probably the pawn gets one back. Maybe. Looks like ninety four though. You're playing like, with fire now. Like, yeah, maybe it's fine, but six. Yeah, I don't know. I, start <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, I was until I realized ninety four existed. I was kind of happier with <laughs> with this than than I am now. Yeah, you still aren't really running very many risks, but no, just some of the moves are okay. I guess it's just. Yeah, it's just not too worried. Yeah, very sure. Black is certainly fine. Mm. So bishop can come here. Can't be bothered with knight g five. And then if yeah, should be three. Black can think about d five or knight g four. So in a way, even though white has an extra tempo, bishop d two and rook f one feel less useful. I don't know about h six. Should be six. H six is played and h uh, three isn't. So if you play bishop yeah, exactly. here, you are not really a tempo up anymore. You, That's true. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, and black is first to play d six d five. But yeah, he still has to be very very equal, right? Uh, Halka Digger says rook f seven is the best move in the tabata by position. What's that about? That's just and he it's about the engine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I I don't I don't know how to explain rook f seven specifically. I don't know how to explain in human terms. Like if the, if the knight wasn't on d7, I would say we're preparing to double on the c file. But the knight on d7 is very much in the way. Maybe there's some long line where, in the end, the rook on f8 is attacked. I can't produce that long line, but maybe it makes sense out of the way. Or he prepares knight f8. I don't know. I'm just trembling. Yeah. Queen e7. I was wondering if knight f4 bothers it. I oh, yeah, knight f yeah yeah knight, knight f4 is I'm annoying. Not sure if it does, but at least it exists. And no, yeah, it's annoying. Yeah. Shuffle around. Somehow. He even though I said earlier that the knight on c3 is very well protected, still the idea of moving any pieces away from the protection of the knight on c3 just completely blindsided me mm. until you mentioned that the move didn't even occur to me somehow. Maybe this is the idea of bishop one then, to be able to play knight f4 if you, if you need it. 
just reinforcing that guy? Mm -hmm. Just yeah, further further supporting the knight on c three too. Now I have to worry about it. And Tabatabai is now taking his first long think of the game. Still plenty of time though. They're already at move eighteen. What else is there to do? What was the conclusion? E five, just general. I think E5 That's actually right, loses right? some material to a kind of a pretty idea, which I calculated, unless I'm... Uh, I mean, BC4, I'm, E takes D4 exists, but I'm too lazy to calculate. So let's say Rook takes C4. And in this position, I think Rook B4 works. And then Knight D5. Because the Rook is caught, and then I take on B4, and I go Queen B3 check, and I think I end up with a healthy extra pawn. Because I have queen takes d4 here, importantly, yeah. This was a kind of a weird line that I tried figuring out, but I think the kind of a more major, although d5, queen e5 maybe is not that stupid, so it might be important that bc4 seems to be strong. e d4, I think we can take on b4 and it doesn't quite work out, right? Because queen e3, bishop f2 loses, and here, I think we can take with the queen. Although maybe it's not unplayable, right? Queen c3. Uh, what do you want? Knight e5? Okay. Some kind of a jump, yeah, I don't know, knight e5 or... Yeah, let's go with knight e5. c5 still exists, though. It's hard to believe, no? Like, yeah, it looks weird. 7 exists, c5 exists. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Halkadiga further reinforcing his own idea that Computer suggestions are very silly in this position. Apparently, this is the the second best move here is knight b8. <laughs> I don't know which depth. I like it. Yeah, knight b8 c6. I can sort of justify. Yeah. <clears throat> Although after knight c6, there's b c4. We're still yeah. in trouble. So. Yeah. I guess we go knight b8 to take on b3 and then go knight c6. Deep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, unplayable, I would say, but deep is another word for it. Yeah, further reinforcing just how good how good a bit of a random of random prep this is by Wesley. Not only not only has he been extremely well prepared for kind of a weird line, he also apparently got somewhere. Uh, because I think these days, you know, even even if you know quite a lot, your actual objective advantage is not always there but you know if if those are the moves that equalize you very much count this as a, as a success also not sure if they if they equalize or if they're just yeah. the best moves we need more information it does look tricky and i don't think wesley is the type to just play for i'm sure he's capable of it to just play for semi bluffs where it says okay you have to find some good moves and it's nothing usually i think he, he does go by the maximum number he can get from compi mm. yeah there's been uh, some questions on this topic already and i mean we kind of alluded to it in the very very run up to in the start of the show but People are interested in this tournament in uh, in China that's going on right now, in which Ding has finally made a draw today, uh, and is on five and a half out of six. And uh, the, the 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 choice of words in the question that I've seen in chat was, uh, are we going to talk about the farming of rating points that Ding is currently uh, involved in? And uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's. I mean, he's the only one with anything at stake in the tournament, but. I'm, I'm pretty sure the, the tournament is on the up and up because there have been much, much more obvious spots where people also were very much on the, you know, tinfoil hat bandwagon re regarding, you know, games between Chinese players. And they always were entirely fair in, in recent years. And also, uh, <laughs> I understand this will sound a little bit silly, but this is really not how smart people cheat. Nobody scores five out of five, five, five out of five in the in the beginning of a tournament. You you need to do well, and if you like, he he doesn't need to anyway. He's just stronger than the field, and the purpose of the tournament is to get him to play games. Uh, and uh, 
the the other players probably aren't as emotionally invested as as he is, but he is just like head and shoulders above the rest of the field. Yeah, I wasn't sure what to think of it. I clicked through the games, and those looked like normal games, also not like staged games at all. He's yeah, just beating people. He outrates by two hundred fifty points by by playing well, which is fair enough. I guess one could argue that. The purpose of the tournament is not only to get him to play those games, but also to have the the rating spot after that. So the field, um, once again, I'm, yeah, uh, won't be the most unpleasant field you could obviously. possibly put together. But I don't think, other than that, there's any shenanigans. At least none that meet the eye. The, the rules are a bit strange, but not sure we can blame Ding for sticking to them and for trying to play the thirty games. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, you know, it's uh, finding the 30 games on short notice is uh, his federation clearly has gone has gone ahead to to help him out. But I think, you know, you know, it will be a good outcome if he plays a candidate. I, I don't think very many people will be unhappy about that. So uh, I certainly won't be. Uh, and uh, it's uh, it's fine if uh, if the federation, because obviously the reason he is inactive is not because he doesn't like chess or anything. It's just you know absolute scarcity of tournaments to play in, and also some very recent, very well publicized you know visa issues and problems completely outside of his control. So the only problem for Ding is that he's miscalculated. Because I will start my two hundred game match against my dear friend Simon Meyer tomorrow. He'll play eight games a day, and if I manage to win all those, he's sixteen hundred. Then I will outrate Ding. By a significant margin, um, so gotta take that into account. Yeah. Why has it never been done? By the way, I mean, my example is a bit extreme. I think I think it's because yeah. you keep on talking about it and then not doing it. I think that's that, the, that is fair. The entire answer is right there in front of us. But other other than me, let's say to pick a random name, oh, no. <laughs> an unnamed two seven fifty player decides to play whatever a 30 game match against really anybody but any 1800 player he will win what is it 25 rating points no something like yeah. stopping them 0 0.9 yeah per game so yeah i can't do math i was a yeah. Some bad yeah. Hmm. it's just that it doesn't look good or would feed it not allow it like I don't because know. it has to be approved by someone. No, could you be stopped from play, playing a private match and winning all the games? Like you play the games, you find really, an arbitrary I mean, you have a location. So Dodgy, Dodgy is now in chat, so we will we will ask Dodgy and he will provide us with an answer. But yeah, I don't, I don't know if he actually has the instruments in place to you know. Dodgy is too strong. You don't want to play Dodgy. He's dangerous for these. Yeah, yeah Dodgy, Dodgy might might make you once or twice. Yeah, if you yeah, play. Yeah. Uh, like in particular, if you play eight games per day, which is actually not allowed. I think the the, the, the limit is three per day for classical games. Even uh, though so I don't it's know how it's tough for me to catch them. Yeah, knight b six played in the meantime by uh, by Amin. In the Amin time. In the Amin mm. time, exactly. Yeah. Didn't that prison guy do this as uh, crazy quest? I feel I should know, but I mean, I feel I should know which prison guy he's referring to, but. I should also mention, because it's being brought up in the chat, that Tabai is only 21 years old, which is not that old, even in chess, <laughs> even in chess lingo. Yeah. Ah, so, yeah, it's it's all in chat. Yeah. Uh, Claude Bloodgood apparently did that while while incarcerated in uh, in the United States. So he got to 20, 27, 59. I think that probably is USCF, right? It's probably not FIDE. Sounds like it. If if Fide, we probably would have heard even more about it. Yeah. I, I, I'm pretty sure I've seen mentions, but yeah. But yeah, the games, uh, uh, you, just to kind of, uh, as you mentioned, like looking through the games, he won a couple of very dodgy positions. He was, uh, I think, completely lost in uh, in one game and much, much worse in another. But both positions were quite sharp and uh both of them looked like they you know judging purely by move number because the the starting times are a bit odd and i don't really watch them live 
both probably featured very heavy time troubles, and yet he is clearly stronger than than the field. So, and and also as you 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 mentioned, and also Chat was mentioning that he he still needs to uh, outrank Livon by the end of the uh, the period. But I think he has enough of a uh, enough of a leeway there. He doesn't actually need to crush that tournament. He needs not to like flub it completely, but. He, yeah, it doesn't look like he's going to do that. Yeah, <laughs> not anymore. But the, the point is, uh, I, I don't think he particularly needed the score. He just needed to, to like get all the games in uh, and, and play at his kind of normal level. But he currently is obviously outpacing that. How long is the tournament? They're playing two a day. It's, I think, a four-round double. Was it? Hang on. Is it a four or a six round round robin? What's it like? I don't I don't even know how to say that properly. Like there's a double round robin, but this is not a double round robin. This is at least a quadruple double round robin, or per, perhaps even a six tuple. I'm not entirely sure. I think he also he plays a six game match against somebody after this is done. Busy schedule. Yeah, quadruple he, round robin tournament. Um... So it's a four player quad round. Yeah, okay. So he he will play twelve games there. Time and control, think, 90 minutes for all moves, which I guess is the shortest allowed feed time control yeah. with a 30 second increment from move one. No, the intention of this tournament seems fairly clear, but it doesn't. From the games, it didn't look like foul play at all. No, no not to me either. Uh, and, and then he plays, plays a match against Wei Yi, uh, which will be a, a sterner test, but once again, he probably by that point will just need to kind of you know, show up and not lose too badly. And he's favored against Wei Yi as well, obviously. He's favored against most people in the world. Uh, That'd be a tough spot for Wei Yi if Ding needs to win the last game to to have the rating required to make the candidates. Win. Yeah. Doesn't look like it will be that close. No, not not currently. Uh, currently, I think he is very safe. And yeah, the question is just like it will, it will take some wind out of him. Obviously, he you know, r regardless of how easy we think the games are, and they really don't look very easy. He just kind of gets out of them because he has more experience and is a very strong player. But even the current tournament he is playing in, the, the his opponents are consistently pushing him. Uh, and yeah, playing like thirty games like this a month is is going to. He'll be bloody tired by the end of it, as the quote goes. But um, then he gets a break. Like if he gets the spot, the candidates are in the summer, so he'll he'll have some time to you know unwind and hopefully sort out visa problems. Because you know that would be you know the absolute final icing on the cake. He does all this and then can't play anymore anyway. Yeah, so, I had that question too. I have no idea what nature his visa problems are. Off, but if it's impossible for him to go to Berlin, why would he be able to go to Madrid? Like maybe just times and regulations will change with with COVID. I have, I have no idea. Yeah, I have no idea how this works, but that that would really be very very unfortunate. And and, and also unlikely with all this. Yeah, all this being done, yeah. he'll. He should have enough time to prepare to, you know, for for for, for somebody somewhere to figure out a solution to this. Yeah. So have you figured out the solution to this position on the board? Might be six. Yeah, it looks, Actually, it looks very good. strange, but I can't figure out why targeting it, stuff, but why it wouldn't there. be bad. Wouldn't be good, yeah. If we take on C4. Yeah, I guess it's just rook c4. I was also like, because you would obviously would like to recapture with the knight, and bishop takes c3 exists as an option. But I was not very happy with allowing rook takes b6, even rook e1, bishop, sorry, bishop 1, rook e1, rook c4, and then I don't know, queen somewhere, b2, b3, b3 probably. Not only is b7. How bad is this? Queen a4? I have knight a4 there. in the end, and it looks. It looks like white is better. I don't know if, you know, better is a very, you know, you can stretch the term quite a bit, but I'm definitely taking white in that final position, but maybe it's holdable, I don't know. Apart from b takes c4, 
I've, I've been looking to, you know, use the fact that pieces, I mean, pieces currently look kind of misplaced and there might be tactics, but I can't really figure out what those tactics are. All kinds of night, night jumps have become available, but they don't seem to do very much. So let's look at this. Rook takes. This is one option, and this. Queen somewhere, b3, I guess. Yeah, but I'm not sure if we've achieved anything. Is, we still, we still don't, don't actually have a threat, right? So black can even maybe make some kind of a waiting move. I know queen c6, maybe. I was hoping maybe a5, but I'm not sure if that does anything. After queen c6, you can probably take it. Yeah, I wanted to take a knight d5. Yes, I will have to probably give the pawn back, but I'm not that unhappy about, let's say, going knight b takes d5 and b7, b5 or something like that. I don't know. Maybe I am. E3, e4 here looks promising. Really strange position. Yeah, that... I don't know. It's also b6. Mm, so, yeah. yeah, it's a mess. Yeah, b6. Yeah, I probably have to go all the way back to e1, but yeah. e4 remains a strong threat. Yeah, we do. Very stuff, strange. Like rook yeah, rook c2. Yeah, rook c2 is probably very annoying, actually. Yeah, very annoying. Okay, it's random moves once again. Mm. Although, yeah, getting the queen out of the way does seem logical, even if there's nothing direct. Yeah. And Wesley is finally thinking. Yeah. Which, which, which one of us gives the speech now? What speech is that? Why he didn't check this? Or? No, no, no. The, the speech about, you know, this being a mixed blessing when your opponent finally starts thinking after he's been blitzing for 20 moves. No, we need new material, Peter. We can't. We can't keep rehashing the old, the old bits. Fair. Mm. Speaking of new material, um, I went to to a comedy show last mm. week. I went to see Louis C.K. First oh. question: Is that okay, or was he was he cancelled? I wasn't sure. Like my friend had tickets, so well, I happily tagged along, but I wasn't sure what the status was. He's been sort of quietly uncancelled, it feels like, to the displeasure of many, and I sort of understand why, but I think the current the current standing is he's kind of quietly back to work, and uh, it upsets it a lot. It wasn't that quiet. There were 10,000 people. But, huh. um, but yeah, I... No, I had the same notion. I hadn't heard of him, but apparently he's touring big arenas for, for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I didn't like his his stand-up that much. The, you, one of the openers was great, the show itself. Did you did you get an occasion to slap him, maybe? Um no, that's that's a different thing that I'm worried about. Because now with Chris Rock having been I'm not sure if the audience knows it. I don't think they follow the internet. Um, Chris Rock, during the Oscars, he was slapped on stage by um, Will Smith. And now, obviously, comedians everywhere are living in fear that this is a dangerous precedent for performing life. And what worries me is that they will now come to the internet and take over live chess commentary, putting us as chess comedians out of work. I'm just not funny. So I think my, my job is secure. You should be very worried though. Fair point. And uh, I am very, very worried. Um, yeah, what, I don't know. It's probably been debated on every show where people talk, but what, what was that? I didn't watch it live. I only saw the 80,000 memes and the video. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> having brought it up, I I will now look extremely silly by suggesting this is perhaps one we should, where we should stay in our lane. But it it does seem like it's probably one where we should stay in our lane, uh, even if we we probably both have some opinions. Uh, what I want to know first of all, Chris Rock, he didn't know 
that Jada Pinkett had alopecia. Is that that's, that's my question. Has that been established? Has anybody said anything about it? Established, I think, is, a, is, is, is strong, but that's been strongly suggested, yes. So otherwise, I don't think he makes that joke to begin with. Yeah, like, I think so, yeah. I don't think it warrants a reaction no matter what, but that would be... Yeah, I'm, I'm not a I huge Chris Rock specialist, but he doesn't strike me as a particularly malicious person, and I don't think he would have gone there if he, if he knew it was a medical condition. Well, he's a comedian. His job is to go go to the edge and be funny. But yeah, I don't think that's the line. He would go to there, especially at the Oscars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or anytime, really. We don't know, though, or I don't know. I do not know that much about what has been said afterwards. I watched the Will Smith speech, which I guess everyone did. That was, yeah, it's just a, such a strange moment. It's the strangest moment in Oscar history, ahead of them naming the wrong winner with La La Land. No? I'm not, I'm not the, uh, an Oscar scholar necessarily, but yeah, it definitely, definitely was very weird to wake up to this. Also, I'm not sure how much you follow German B celebrity gossip. But the day before, German, comedian might be generous, but German media personality, Oliver Pocher, was sitting ringside at a boxing event. And some guy walks up to him and does exactly the same thing, slaps him in the face. But he, they didn't even know each other. He just didn't like Pocher's humor and personality. So he felt he deserved a slap. It was a very, very serious slap. So this was back-to-back. It's strange times we're living. Yep. I'm not sure what you will do with that piece of information, but I felt you should know. I will file it away for for clustering my mind. No, I don't. <laughs> it will actually get get filed away, and it will never get used, uh, as is you know, the case with many a thing. Hmm. Night to B six. Are we are we sort of desperate enough to actually ask the all seeing eye what it thinks about this? I'm always desperate enough. Here we go. Oh, I only got one line. Okay, one line will do. Zero fifty nine. B C four. Rook C four. Queen B three or Queen D three. No, it's Queen D three. Queen B three. Yeah, and weirdly, some of rook f seven. And now a five is strong, but yeah, is is it also strong after queen c six? Like the, the the line that we were looking at. Oh no, here no, just knight f four. Knight strong four, for whatever reason. Ah, c three is not actually hanging because b six is hanging. Ah, that makes here good at chess. That makes a ton of sense. Yeah, knight six knight five is a huge threat. Yeah, computer good at chess is a proper take here. All right, so Wesley slightly better, but not not game over better. How's the other game going? Bishop d1? Bishop d1 is a weird, weird move, but at first I thought, what's the reply to knight b4? But he can quite safely play d3, d4 there, I think. That's what oh. he's hoping for. What's the reply to d5? Bishop... CD and bishop b3 or direct bishop b3? Ah, CD and bishop b3 looks very nice, actually. Don't know. Although knight seven, I guess exists, oh, right? Gosh. Rook d eight as yeah, rook d eight as well. Yeah, rook d eight is perfectly fine. Yeah, no, I think black is completely fine. I'm. Yeah, the question is if black is better. Yeah, machine does not approve of bishop d one. Says uh, says Yu Gi Oh. Yeah, it is a it is a weird looking move, but still, like I I suspect when you say doesn't improve it means that perhaps like it went from plus zero zero seven to minus zero one five uh, one point five or zero I mean yeah zero point one five yeah can't really numbers elude me I doubt this was plus zero zero seven black looked better already no or more comfortable mm-hmm. some yeah very comfortable yeah definitely weirdly enough h6 appears to be the more useful move like of the yeah. two non-symmetrical moves here Stopping knight g5, 
I think makes a ton Huge. more sense yeah, yeah. Uh, than putting the rook on the e on on the e file here. Ah, okay. So black is significantly better now, according to to Phantomas. Yeah, I, I will. What's the move? Yeah, I'm guessing d5. I mean, if you if you don't push immediately, it gives. Although you can maybe prepare it for one more move, like rook fd8 or something, and like ask white to play bishop b3, which unprompted looks a bit weird. Yeah. A4. A4. Maybe I will play knight before then. You know, eventually... Oh, D5 plate. Yeah. Rook FD8 Although... is indeed the machine move. Yeah, but I think I think D5 is very logical. I think it's very difficult to stop yourself from playing D5 if it's already available. There should be a way to just trade everything away for white here and make a draw. I'm just not seeing it yet. Takes, takes and bishop A4, maybe? I just want to find a good way to push d3, d4 somewhere and trade everything in the center. Knight d4 is very oh, annoying right. here, though, yeah. Very annoying. Yeah, it's bad, doesn't it? Yeah, it just doesn't look, doesn't look right at all. Yeah, this is the issue with... Uh, yeah, and this is what you alluded to earlier, and we kind of yeah. laughed it off. And he goes bishop a4 straight away, which I <laughs> thought was an option, but I, I didn't like something about that move. I remember I tried to calculate it, and... Just liked something about it. Maybe just knight before anyway. Does he want knight e5? Maybe he wants to take on d5 twice then and go d3, d4. Mm -hmm. But then c4 exists, right? You This is how you get a very unpleasant endgame if you don't make an immediate draw there. Like d4, c4, strategically you're in a lot of trouble. Like if a6 and b5 happens, you're... I mean, lost yeah, is a strong... Yeah. yeah, lost is a strong mord, but like you start thinking... Yeah, you do lose. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah. So, what's the reply to line before then? This ninety five may have ninety five looks looks more sensible. There should be six a three or something. Yeah. Seems to work, no? Yeah, More suddenly seems to, be completely, seems to be completely fine for white. Yeah. No issues. I don't know about d4, but it doesn't feel that threatening, does it? Like knight. Not really. In particular, so, since yeah, we... Knight two. Yeah. We have the bishop takes before threat immediately as well, so we can, we can simplify it will. Also, stupid question if takes, you take here, yeah? Yeah, we take and then we go DC and... We say we're we okay. Losing, yeah, we're not even losing the pawn. I think we might be even okay with this if bishop takes c4 was possible. Well, okay for, you know, a given value of okay, but it's yeah. it's not. <clears throat> yeah. So what should black do? Just, I don't know, cover? Okay, c8, I guess. Yeah, well, hang on, but then c, c takes d5 might... Win a piece, right? Ah, <laughs> piece Oops. Yeah, that would be that would be a bit unfortunate. Mm -hmm. So we still we still don't have a move other than night before. Yeah, Bishop B4 seems to have been a very, very clever choice. And this probably explains why starting with Rook with, with Rook FG8 was stronger, because Bishop A4 would have been much less forcing then. Mm -hmm. What else is there? I cover this, but now you take a play. Oh, we just, yeah, take, take me three, there. for instance, yeah. Just play quietly. Yeah, it doesn't look like... Bishop bishop I mean, if we can prepare bishop f5, like bishop f8, bishop f5 here. Um, maybe. But it doesn't look horrible okay. anyway. Yeah, 95, 94, yeah. You start thinking maybe white can be a bit better even. You. Yep. <clears> that also goes with, I think it was Anish's theory about Hikaru, that sometimes he can be somewhat careless if it's not forcing moves, but then once play becomes forcing, he's always incredibly precise. And here he might have drifted a bit into this, but now d5 bishop a4, he's right there. Yeah, yeah. He seemed very on point in uh, in, in both of the 
legs that he played. I think he scored plus one in both. I'm oh, sorry, plus two in, in, in both of them, right? Uh, Did he score plus two here? I, I can't yeah, he, he, yeah, he lost he one to Levon, then he won against Levon. He won the last three. Ah, oh, yeah, he won the last one as well. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, he, he, he won the entire second second round. Um, and I think he scored plus two in the first one as well. And he also beat Richard in... Uh, in classical time control on the way to the finals. So, yeah. yeah. Is there a lesson in there? More Twitch streaming? But I guess you had to be good at chess and then do the Twitch streaming. Yeah, I think, uh, maybe. I think, maybe I I think start, starting off from a position of being good at chess is kind of important there, yeah. Mm. Okay, then no lesson. No particular, no, no particular lesson, yeah. And uh, now he finds himself in a, an absolute dreamland where he can subtweet Nigel Short. I'm not following, or I guess I Nigel, this. Nigel, at some point, uh, I think somebody at some point acquainted Nigel with the whole "I literally don't care" thing, and Nigel tweeted something about that not being good enough to to get you to the World Championship, which. Is now being quote tweeted back at Nigel. Hmm. Which is fair enough. <laughs> I mean, still staring at this position, but no. I think White is just fine now, yeah. The threat is annoying. And yeah, any move that covers it allows Bishop C6. Uh, no, they work. This is not how it works. Plus one is three and a half out of six. Um, four Unless you go to a wedding. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, in, uh, in, in chess lingo, plus one is, yeah, one win above 50%. And that would not be for four out of six. That would be three and a half. Four out of six is plus two. Then five out of six is plus three. Plus three and a half. Yeah. Good. Come on, Wesley. So you just blitz out the first eighteen moves, and now you make us wait for up now? Yeah, that's uh, very unfair. So it goes typically. To be fair, like you mm. first think. In the game then often is more than a three minute thing. What is the time control? I, I should know these things, but you know how it is. Uh, 90 for 40 and then 30 until the end, I think, with half, uh, with half a yeah. minute. To end Increment come. from move one, yes. Yeah, so move there's one, no, yeah. no time trouble drama. Absolutely none. What we can look forward to. All right. That's all I had, Peter. Yeah. I choose awkward silence from here on. <clears throat> oh, I went to I went to see to visit the tournament. Oh yeah. Tell us tell us all about that. That was it. Mm. Mm. How's the admission policy? What does that mean? Uh, uh, if you need tickets and so on? No, I mean, uh, like, uh, from how close up can you watch? I didn't go inside. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think... So first of all, it's a nice venue in the very center of Berlin in some backyard. I also went there on a sunny day. It was a, it was a beautiful... Atmosphere. It didn't feel like a giant, giant event um, in a sense. It all feels, yeah, like <clears throat> very, very compact. But it was a, a nice venue, nice atmosphere, nice weather. No complaints there. When you go inside, 
there there was some curtain and behind that was a VIP room, but I didn't want to push my luck if I was VIP enough. I got some some wristbands to, to go in, but I'm not sure if it covered the VIP room. But I, it didn't. Of course, I listened. I was trying There's to catch no, some of these VIP conversations. There's no VIP in the VIP room. You know that, right? I think there was literally no one in the VIP room. <laughs> uh, that's my attempt at quoting some lyrics, which felt disgustingly flat. You know, I don't listen to Bob Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> Well played. <laughs> there's no coming back from that. Uh, so, and the, I, I saw from the pictures that they're still going for their their favorite, you know, crypt. Uh, uh, what's the word? Not the style, like the. Ever since they started hosting those Grand Prix, the like the, the playing hall in particular is. Uh, there's a lot of black around. No? Okay. Yeah, there's there's absolutely no natural light, despite some of the venues that Grand Prix have been hosted and have having like uh, floor to ceiling windows, those get boarded up, literally, like they, they get it. boarded up by, by, by black curtains and, 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 and those black uh, kind of wall thing is lost words completely. So yeah, they, they, they still, they, they still very much go for their patented crypt atmosphere. Yeah, I I honestly haven't seen that much. So I walk past the VIP room and then I think you get to some sort of balcony thing where I guess you could sit or stand and watch the players from above and probably also get some headphones, listen listen to commentary. There weren't a lot of people around, but it was a nice nice backyard atmosphere. They had like a, a little little cafe there. You, yeah. There were chess pieces in front, front of the thing. Sun was shining. Mainly, I'm very happy that the sun was shining. I'm not sure we can credit the event for it, but it's rare in Germany. Um, yeah. So it was a beautiful day. Yeah, we we went for a walk earlier, right before wow. before the show started, and it was kind of a really weird combo of snowing and like really really bright sunshine, which is unusual. If it snows and there's sunshine, do you get a snowball? How does that work? It doesn't. It just doesn't. Doggo was very confused. Wesley, I'm not sure if he's confused, but he's taking his time here. I nervously click on refresh, but the position stays the same. Yeah. You know, I think, yeah, the, the, it's it's time for the bit, I guess. Yeah. He, he knows, or at least strongly suspects he is better now, because this is not the move that machine was telling him is supposed to be played here but as we've sort of established like if your way to an advantage is to just take on c4 and then make a kind of a quiet ish move like queen b3 or queen d3 which doesn't really create an immediate threat it's very understandable that he is perhaps currently looking for more uh because surely he i mean b takes c4 and queen somewhere very much plays itself uh but yeah he he finally we, we have move yeah uh he finally did make a move here which Honestly, looks very artificial and uh, very deep. Queen a2. Yeah. Well, obviously, the idea is to push a4, a5, like he's creating an immediate threat of just kind of you played knight b6, sir. I will make you unplay it. But uh, yeah, the, the the bar is not very impressed, which I assume means black now has some ways to uh, deal with the very telegraph threats of a4, a5. What's the way? Uh, and uh, our friend from the other side, Hulk Digger, says uh, Queen A2 was the computer's first choice after knight B8, if I remember correctly. So maybe this this is Wesley mixing up ideas. That actually is a, a, a very interesting bit, you know, factoid because yeah, Queen A2 is really not a very natural move to make, and. Uh, Knowing it exists in some position and perhaps not being sure that this is the one is is one way you can get there. Even if you're sure it's not the one and that the computer you know, line was knight b8, queen a2, then the move is very much stuck in your head. Well, mm -hmm. it might not occur naturally as a candidate move, but if you know it's the move in some other line, it's just there. Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense since he blitzed yeah. into this position. Yeah. 
So what is the, I, I'm still not sure what the reply is though. We can, uh, if we take on C3 first, we can actually get the knight to C4, right? That's I what I was wondering too, yeah, no jump. Yeah, and whatever you take with, we are allowed to play knight c4 here. I don't think we're very worried about rook b7, knight e3. And uh, if we're allowed to play b7, b6, I think much of our problems have now been, if not solved, then at least diminished. So that's one solution. I don't know how good, but it's uh, it's a solution at least. Looks fairly decent, doesn't it? Like doesn't b6, look bad. then we start taking on 5 but... mm -hmm. Yeah, play b6 then, yeah, e5 is one idea, just queen g6, rook c6, rook fc8 is another, just, you know, mm. this is to good squares, knight on c4, you know, covers for a multitude of sins, um, as they say. <laughs> I'm sure they say that. Yeah. All the time. <laughs> well known saying, knight to c4 covers for a multitude of sins. Um. With the queen on a2 and a, and a full tempo given up, I am slightly more inclined to start thinking about a6, a5, but probably not enough to actually make me play the move. Giving up the b5 square is still very, very unattractive. Hmm. What else is there? No, well, but this line looks looks fairly common sense. Also, I, I will say I will say one thing though. Uh, we can maybe even improve on that because. Like, if white goes a5, we can take on c3 then and do the exact same thing after, right? We can still play, let's say we go rook f7 here, or yeah, let's say, yeah, a5, c, uh, bishop c3. a b6 doesn't look very threatening, and if we take on c3, I get, I get the same position, but I've included maybe a useful move in rook, rook f7, and I've provoked a5 where it might become a weakness, question mark, question mark. Mm -hmm. Although knight a4c5 now exists, right? Maybe it's not really a weakness. Kind of double-edged. Mm. Yeah, maybe maybe it's not really a good inclusion. But that means that a5 doesn't even constitute that much of a threat. Yeah. It's not a huge threat, but maybe it's a useful move. Maybe actually stopping b6 in all of those positions is something white might want. Yeah, curious. Curious. What else can Black do? Although those are already two decent looking moves. Let's, yeah. let's start. CB3, we don't want to. Yeah, because it allows Rook B6, right? It's, we're not getting the same position. Yeah, we're not gaining anything, but mm, yeah. getting this option. Probably actually a very decent option, yeah. Yep. So absolutely no reason for us to invite that specifically. I mean, queen c6 exists, and once again, after a5, we can do similar things. We don't have to go knight d7. We can still go bishop c3, I guess. Not much has changed. Maybe bit c4 is strong here, though, right? Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, it doesn't. Mm. Doesn't feel necessary, no, given the alternatives at least. Sorry for my nasally drone. Uh, I get a bit of a summer of a summer cold, which is the most fun cold to have. Like you think finally winter's over, we get some sunshine, and then boom, cold. Also, you know, the idea of March being summer is... As I said, where I've seen sunlight in Germany, we define that as summer has started. Let's go get ice cream and go mm. to the swimming hole. That's uh, nice of you to remind, remind me because I've, I've been kind of craving some ice cream. I actually have some. So we, the only thing that's stopping me from having it is actually remembering that I wanted it. <laughs> which probably means it's not a very strong craving <laughs> but, but, but i might actually get it after the show you'll probably have forgotten by the end of the show or, or that yes the, the, one of those two things will happen also you know child n might have eaten by this point Oof. 
That's why I keep my ice cream in the highest drawer of the fridge where the kids can't get it. Yeah, no longer work with your kids anymore. <laughs> no, no longer works in my situation. Yeah, that, that that strategy has outlived its sell by date. What's chat saying? Ding has gone to full rented GM mode. I don't think he's renting the opponents, no way. No. No. Is Ding playing right now? He's always playing, right? There. No, no, no. I think... Uh, Are sleeping breaks? Yeah. I think one game is at 4 a.m. my time, and the other one is... Uh, late in the evening so i think there's right now there's a break one game is at 4 a.m your time and the other game is late in the evening your time how does it even work the one at 4 a.m is ah, like ah, the, okay i'm slow so it's the whatever 10 p.m you play four hours and then yeah something yeah it's a to our break some kind of, some kind of a weird stroke I, I, I might be lying about that let me check for a second hmm Four AM and ten AM, yeah, I've, I've Peter time, yeah. I'm, I, I, I was lying about that. Yeah. So yeah, they they finished the second game of the day, and now they they're on a break. Right. Now they can prepare for the two games to play tomorrow. Absolutely. Meanwhile, Mamadiarov has played Rook FD8, mm -hmm. which, yeah, for yeah. lack of a better move, probably, but I guess he's not thrilled about having. Yeah, I think uh, it's going to be much harder to push. Although, you know, in terms of this game being over by move 30, I think we're in trouble. This, this looks like a proper game now. I mean, Queens are off, but it's kind of a complicated middle game where I can definitely imagine this becoming quite, quite imbalanced. Yeah, and either side could still be better, no? Like mm -hmm. with absolutely, yeah, with your plan. This. The excitements of the Queenie to Petrov. Oh yeah, leads to very disbalanced positions, as we are now watching, seeing, observing. If you want to be even weirder, you can do it like Magnus: play knight d three and then queen two. Yeah. It's not a particularly weird line, but there is this this one position, which is yeah, the, this one, yeah. My favorite is always this one. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. This is the one. Ooh, yeah. Very relevant to today's games. It is checkmate. It is very much checkmate, yeah. Not forced though. Black can go here, or white after knight c six, knight five, knight four, can. Not blunder into mate. Yeah, 95, 94, 93. What do they play here? Wasn't there some trick somewhere on the way here? I can't remember. Stuff. Oh, C3, C6 here or something, yeah? 93, All 90. kinds of witness. No, bishop D3, knight C5, maybe? No, no, I think it's, it's, I think it's actually C3, C6, no? Yeah, yeah, I'm just wondering what happened after bishop D3. I guess knight C5, C5 looks, looks very logical, yeah? I think this is how the the you know the original Carlson Karana game went. No, no, no. That was 90, 93, 96, Like no. not allowing any fuckery. Yeah. So h six, bishop d two. It does look like a strange move. No, like. Maybe bishop um, h4 isn't like g5, not h5. Yeah, you obviously don't want to give up the two bishops. So. Don't you go here? What bothered him there? Knight d5. Yeah. Good question. still play c4, knight c3. Mm -hmm. just... c5 also. Not exactly forced, I'm assuming, but. Or c4. Strange game. But is it heat up? which is great news for us. Absolutely. Just what we wanted to see. 
Not sure it's great news for Hikaru and what he wanted to see from today. But maybe he also feels already right, like he dodged a bit of the bullet there with this unpleasant situation. No. Bishop c6, bc, how bad can it be? Yeah. I wonder what Hikaru is considering apart from bishop c6. Maybe cd5 and then bishop c6, but it doesn't look right because you, yes, you kind of create the more obvious weaknesses on the black side, but you also are much more worried about your d3 pawn in this position compared to the other one because the g file is open. This I just don't like for white. I wouldn't really want to. No. I mean, it's probably still fine. Like you go knight e4 there or knight a4. You're probably not doing that poorly. But why do this to yourself? Yeah, but why do this to yourself? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Some move. Yeah, and if you continue making waiting moves, you, you are inviting some trouble, I would assume. Like if you play, I don't know, rook ac1 or something, I guess knight... Just allowing rook ac8 to yeah, the rook. Also, yeah, knight b4 might become much stronger. We were playing knight e5 here, and now knight e5 d takes c4 loses material, so we might actually be in trouble. Yeah. Rook ac1, unlikely to happen. Yeah, I mean, if you want a waiting move, it's probably not rook ac1, but what is it then? Yeah, curious that it's taking him so long for this decision. It really does look like a... Ah, I, I think I know. I think I know what he means. But that also is not something he should be playing. If he, if he takes, he takes d5. Black has to take with the knight and the rook. And you can play uh -huh. bishop b3 there. But once again, rook d3, why, why would you do this to yourself? Rook d3 and then king f7 in that final position, you are a bit worse for... No reason whatsoever. Oh no, here rook c6 exists. Okay, you're not worse here, but uh, yeah, still, still not worse. I said what I said. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, bishop f6 or something. Yeah, absolutely zero reason for white to engage in any of this. No. Mm. Take here now. Yeah, but you're still fighting for equality. You probably get there. Yeah. You're trying to equalize here with white. Bishop f6, yeah. bishop c3. Yeah, I guess you do make a draw this way, right? You go bishop f6, bishop c3, and you hope everything gets traded. And probably everything does get traded, but once again, zero winning chances, and maybe you miscalculate somewhere along the way and you struggle. Well, it could be if he's in a peaceful mood today. They doesn't want this. Probably better, but unbalanced position, and he's thinking if he can work the other way, the other out to draw if he wants to do that, but who knows? Hmm. Yeah. And then the other one, Queen A2, has still not been answered by a min. Yeah, difficult position. Not not a surprise that it's the he he's taking time. And from reaching move 17 with like 10 minutes spent combined, they have now spent an hour on the next four ply. Since you told us that Tabatabai might be a bit of a time trouble addict, he's probably also not in a hurry. Yeah, I think. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know if any if any of the you know the proper uh, time trouble merchants are very happy about their their addiction, but I think yeah, they they sang sanguine about it. There, it's the state of things. Yeah, also. Often it's not on purpose, no, it's just because they like to deeply study the yeah. position yeah. resulting in the early middle game, which yeah. But yeah, as I yeah. as you said, like you, you if it's if it's what you're used to, you're kind of completely unpanicked by it. You you've been there. And Hikar actually has gone for the position I was pretty sure he wouldn't go for. Which is interesting to me. Uh actually I thinks know. this is a forest draw. Yeah. I'm guessing, because yeah, like you you don't have winning chances here with white. You you, you absolutely do this if you think it's a, it's a forest draw. Um, I wouldn't be very happy about it, but I guess it's fine. I guess it's like you play bishop f6, and then you, after bishop c3, 
you would like as black to continue improving because knight takes c6 is still not a threat after bishop c3. But you also don't have very many useful waiting moves, and white can go like rook e3, rook e1, and continue reinforcing the knight on e5. So in the end, you Let's shrug it. Six is a bit of a threat. No? Oh. I may, yeah, with rook on d5, maybe no. Although e1, I know e1, so e1. Not yet. No, it might become it might become one later, but not yet. Yeah, because knight e7 doesn't work, and bc rook takes d3. You actually are worse with white. Mm -hmm. The bishop on e6 is very strong. Um, but yeah, in the end, I think Black just kind of shrugs and takes on e5, and it's a draw. Which also, now the arrow is Black in the first of two semi-final games, so it's not like he's in a must-win or absolutely not must-push yeah. position at all. Yeah, I think he will probably suspect that maybe he was a bit better somewhere along the way, and it it's now mostly disappeared. But yeah, obviously, if somebody told him he would make like an hour and a half draw today. With black, he will quite, I think, happily take it. He played kind of nerve wracking die break yesterday. Hikaru didn't, so draw with black game one, perfectly fine. So that means Wesley and Tabatabai are in charge of the evening's entertainment. Mm hmm. But if they don't make moves, how entertained are we? Then, then we are in charge of, of the evenings entertainment. Oof. And that's Oof. even worse, yeah. Yeah. It feels too early to talk about um, movies. Mm. We all I did look... watch Coda the other day, though. Mm. You know, I'm a very emotional, touchy feely type absolutely. of person. Yeah. Absolutely. So you won't be surprised, and this is not a lie, that I pretty much cried through the last half hour. It's a very, very nicely done tearjerker, this Coda movie. Mm. Recommended. Yeah. Hmm. <clears throat> So what's going on with you? Not very much. We're you know, spending most of our time, you know, trying to do, you know, dogger related things. He's been uh, going to school. We I, I got the diploma for you know, if, if there was any way to fail that exam, I think I failed it. Dogo didn't fail it, but I failed it. Uh, we we went for like first like first entry level obedience course, and uh, there's like six six lessons, and then you you show off your skills. And uh, uh, <laughs> unfortunately for the Dogo, owner skills are also being tested there. And yeah, I I wasn't very impressive, but he did fine. So we, you, you can't see it because of the, the background, but there's a very proudly displayed, displayed diploma on the shelves behind me. Uh, and then we enrolled him in more classes because obviously, you know, he hasn't studied enough, but. <laughs> I'm not a fan. Poor Doggo. Let him chill a bit. It's not all about education. Let Doggo live. Yeah. I think he is still kind of living his best life, though. Yeah, um, we've uh, kind of ignored the fact that Chakriar is now going to be a pawn up, but he's still not going to win this position because Bishop C3 and A3 is going to be quite solid. Caro doesn't seem overly concerned, and I don't think this game will last much longer than move 30, 31. Mm, yeah. This Even like pawn is just of zero significance. Mm, like yeah, you 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 can't really create a passer on the queen side with the bishop on c three being so completely, completely solid, and eventually white starts offering rook trades as well. So yeah, this is you not can even do it after c four rook d three if you feel like yeah. but allowing c three is also completely completely fine. F six king f seven. I think they'll just blitz out moves here. Yeah, yeah. I think I think this is. Uh, Let's see if we can predict the end of the game. I'm saying like a3, king f7, 
King F2. No, it's tough. Maybe Bishop B3. I'm saying uh, I'm saying Bishop D5. Bishop D5 instead of Bishop B3 or it? Yeah, here Bishop D5, Rook E1, C4, Rook E3, Rook D1, Rook E1, Rook D3. Mm -hmm, interesting. You went with the move repetition. Uh -huh. That's that's my bet. It's not a bad bet. Actually, Bishop B3 and Rook D1. I'm going with this. Yeah, yeah, this is this is bad. Um, yeah, honestly, this is bad. Now we must repeat moves. It's not going to be. Easy. <laughs> okay. Must is uh, doing a lot of heavy lifting there. But... Okay, we got a3 and King of Seven. Oh, King H4, right? Oh, yeah, we. H4, come on. Very aggressive. Come on. But way too ambitious. I mean, I'm sure it's fine and a good move and good chess culture and allowing g5, but come on. Yeah. It actually is like if if we want to find a teachable moment there, actually not allowing black to gain too much space without trading pawns on the king side is very good, is very good chess culture. So, you know, in as much as this game is still alive, it's it's a useful little bit of something. If black was eager to continue, yeah. He can continue something like this and less mm -hmm. so if there's only two pawns on the king side, but it's all very strong. I don't think king f2 would have put him into too much danger. Though. No, not, not in this particular case. Yeah. <clears throat> and in the meantime, after a uh, prolonged thought, I mean, did play rook f7, which was one of the most we, uh, we mentioned as an option. I think it's probably being played with the intention of going bc, bishop c3, even though rook takes c4 probably doesn't lose either. But or maybe it does lose. Uh, no, here e three is hanging, right? So knight d five we can take. He takes d five. Ah, knight d five wins a piece. Sorry, I'm losing my mind. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, probably a five is enough of a reason not to do this because now we we do have to move away from the c four square, which we would very much like to occupy. We shall see what Wesley does. Let's witness the end of this game. Hikaru Nakamura already qualified for the candidates. So the, the remaining tournament is a bit of a victory lap for him. But still, if chess players, if grandmasters play tournament games, it's never just for, for fun and casual, right? I mean, he will. He will try to make it to the finals and win it. Absolutely. Yeah. He won't push in every game. I mean, if he... he judging from today. If they if they let him not finish the tournament at all and kind of fly home, maybe he would have actually taken that option. But since he's still there playing, I mean, obviously he's not he's not going to be not playing for, um, uh, you know, maximizing his uh, his EV. And yeah, Shah has done this in a kind of a weird way because now Rook H five actually creates a threat. Maybe you go Rook D five though. Rook D five still still does enough. Yeah. Oh, okay. I so think we're headed so this way. Which we did they, not see coming at all. Yeah, they found uh, they found the way. Good job by you. Good job by you. And draw agreed. Oh, move thirty. Yeah, ah, it's move thirty. They are not even gonna go through the move repetition motions. Mm. Yep. All right. Yeah, Nakamura showing by his opening choice, he was fine with a calmer day today. Then. Maybe got a little more excitement than he was hoping for with possibly some sloppy moves here. Bishop d2 and a rookie one and bishop d1. And it seems like, what was it? The moment I was rook here, d5 yeah. is incredibly natural. Yeah. But rook fd8, not rook committing yet, mm -hmm. taking the sting out of this. And yeah, I guess we can just go rook c8 yeah. here and then maybe d5 gains the strength because we will always be taking with the rook, obviously, with the rook on c8. Yeah, and uh, Chad was saying it was something something significant, like uh, 0 0.6 was being quoted at us, which is really That's a pretty serious. That's yeah, quite, quite a serious advantage for no, this engine gives less, but, uh, but it's, it's actually it's getting there. No, not anymore. And raising and dropping, and who knows? Yeah. yeah, but black is better, so that was 
that was the moment indeed mm -hmm. the line on my screen is some weird stuff though here and king of eight king of eight or bishop of eight yeah it was cover d5 bishop of five and then black has black has a good position but yeah uh perhaps a kind of a slight chance was missed but basically choosing a line like this with white gives you so much leeway that you know the moment uh Chahrier did not make one precise move Hikaru was able very very accurately to uh to steer this back to complete safety and yeah he gets to play he gets to play black tomorrow and yeah somebody since I was constantly referring to the very very safe repertoire with the black pieces some somebody did did, did uh remind me that his uh, black repertoire these days for Hikaru also includes that absolutely mad line with the queen on b7 in the in the QGA. So obviously not every game, but you know he he is not contractually obliged, I don't believe, to to play that particular queen's gambit accepted, and he does he does know how to play. So when you say that black games against world class opponents, in particular one d4 games. Uh, um, where he's played a lot of yeah, I mean things might have changed, but before his comeback, he played a lot of these queens gambit declined. That those could have been his Achilles heel in a way. Not saying he's not solid, obviously, but that's where he struggled. Specifically, against, specifically against Magnus, no. Well, Hikaru um, lost to Fabi a nice game against Magnus. He had a couple, but I'm thinking tournament games. My my hunch was that he got into some trouble there, but it's it's been a while ago, and I'm not yeah. quite sure. And also, it uh, probably has been fixed in the meantime. Yeah, I, I think there was definitely a, you're absolutely right. There was definitely a period where uh, there was kind of a target on sort of one specific setup that he kept on repeating, and people kind of found found ways to. Uh, yeah, his repertoire looked a bit limited, and people kept finding ways to whatever semi bluff him or mm -hmm. ask some questions in particular i think in in this type of complex like <laughs> but yeah like i said as he hasn't played for two years um in classical games and in the online cycle he did look fairly fairly stable and of course he's such a tremendously strong player that he also doesn't really depend on the opening it was just when he was hit with some very targeted stuff by the very best mm -hmm. that sometimes he struggled there yeah it's still like since this is what we're discussing currently i was still kind of uh somewhat shocked he chose to play uh that line against levon in round one uh here the 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 e4 b5 qga yeah, yeah but that's i'm not sure if we can take it as another example i'm just saying I wouldn't bring up his super solid black repertoire as his main asset why he should make a draw mm -hmm. today like obviously making a draw today having gotten the job done is perfectly fine and i'm also not sure how motivated Mamed yarov is maybe he will also think okay let's make a draw tomorrow play play tie break see what happens yeah yeah i think uh, you know shakriar enjoys uh, enjoys rapid and blitz and is not at all a bad player i mean hikaru is a a bit of a beast but uh, Shahriar is uh, has always been a very very dangerous uh, player in in short time controls. Yeah, but EV wise, Mamed Yarov should push tomorrow or like yeah. push at least try to get a game. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure. Yeah, if he gets out of the opening with a playable position, he will he will very much attempt to uh, to bring it home without playing uh, tie breaks. But yeah, very much depends on the outcome of the opening. We have also seen him to seen him take very practical decisions and just take games off if they don't go particularly well in the opening. Yeah, or if he doesn't feel there's much at stake, oh, yeah. we'll or, see. Or that, yeah, absolutely. So BC played. Uh, yeah, this is the this is the spot because now having not played Bishop takes c three on the previous move, uh, if you take on c three here, you are allowing Rook b six. Um, it's a better version because b7 is already protected. So we take on e1, we take on c4, a4 is hanging. But even here, knight f4 seems very annoying. Rook a4, queen b3. Yeah, or even queen b1 apparently, yeah, since the ticker is. You know. Yeah, and the, the, I mean, his choice is very understandable in that respect. This position doesn't look very attractive, so he just 
doesn't do any of that. He goes rook takes c4. The, the drawback, as we've pointed out earlier, is you've taken with the rook after spending basically a tempo playing knight b6, which kind of heavily indicated you would like the knight to be there. But after a5, wait, where does the knight go? I think there's some argument for knight c8 d6. I'm still nervously checking this at every... Yeah, but we, I think the, the reply is always the same. Right? We just yeah. always go ED and Queen fine, yeah. I don't know if it's fine, but that's always what we do, right? King H1. It's kind of yeah, strange. I was just wondering if this knight is silly now, if you have time to... Knight A7, C6 might not be that bad, yeah. Also, it wouldn't, it wouldn't really be glorious on D7 either, so... That's fair. Mm. Like, if you, if you imagine the same position with knight on D7, it's also arguably Black's worst piece on this on, on the board with no moves yeah if i've played so we'll we'll see i mean you can take on c3 even here but that would be kind of a weird weird way to play oh, and, white's uh, position looks very and, and, and i mean specifically because knight a4 exists but i don't know like maybe i'm just kind of misplacing my pieces for no reason whatsoever like nobody trades right you just go knight e2 or and I've put my knight on a4, and I now I have to justify it somehow, and I'm not sure how I'm going to justify it. Rook fc7, I guess, but yeah, I'm I'm not a fan. <clears throat> At least very risky, no? Strategically. Mm -hmm. So we're going with knight c8, yeah? I think currently I would yeah, I would prefer knight c8 of all of our options. 95 exists, but is not forced, right? We can also at least consider maybe playing e3, e4. Although, I mean, queen c6 is a very nice kind of connecting move that... All of a sudden, this position looks harmonious, and the white somehow, after mm -hmm. e4 with d4 weakened, looks less harmonious yeah. than e5, 97. Whatever. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure this is how you should proceed. Is there a way to create a threat? otherwise so i think allowing 96 would be just very very strange here right like just allowing black to bring all the pieces in without doing anything my my next two moves in this position if i'm given the the freedom are queen c6 and 96 in some order and then i'm starting to think that i'm better with black if if nothing happens and i get to play those moves without any tactics being being a punishment. Is it time for your favorite, knight e4? Well, with knight on c8, we are, oh, hang on, we, we just take on f6 here, yeah, and we kind of happily trade off some of the good squares, some of the good pieces. And, rook and again, the remaining nice. pieces aren't terrible, no? Yeah, knight g6, b5, though, yeah. Yeah. Not, not horrible at all, yeah. Also, knight e4, we might have option. Maybe not, maybe not. Knight e4 bishop before doesn't look right. Six. Yeah, I mean, not too many, too many horses, maybe. Not bad, but yeah, you, you don't want you don't want them occupying the same square. Mm. Fighting for the same square, I should say. <clears throat> what the late Mark Voretsky taught us as the superfluous piece, no? If you have yeah. two pieces, they want to go to one square. Yeah. Hmm. While Tabatabai will take another 20 minute think here. Yeah. Maybe we should get a six minute coffee or a six, coffee. six, to, uh, six to 10 minute coffee. Yeah, but also chat is well, currently discussing everybody's favorite hobby horse is the discussion what happens if the Canada's tournament fails to produce the, you know, quote unquote desired result and then Magnus actually follows through with saying, Yeah, that's not the kind of that I wanted. Go go play in your sandbox. I'm not interested. Chat is chat is very excited by all the possibilities there. I'm excited too. What is gonna happen? Like is it first or the second finisher in the candidates? Yeah, I think I think the specific scenario that, that is being discussed right now is specifically Hikaru winning the candidates and then Magnus saying, nah, 
not interested. And then you can't say no to Icaro, can he? Like <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm I'm struggling. Sauron. Sauron. Yeah, I'm, I'm struggling to, to picture that happening, to be honest. <laughs> Sauron dodging Frodo. <laughs> that can't happen. Yeah. Um one scenario I would consider fair is if the winner of the candidate has to defend his title against the next highest rated player, assuming he manages to play at least 30 games in August. <laughs> yeah, that Just should be like, it out there. like the, the, the running challenge. Yeah. Whenever, whenever a spot opens up in whatever tournament, somebody should be required to play a game per day for the next calendar month. And that should be enough qualification for anything. As and long as he is rated. Mm, yeah, obviously. Very important. Coffee? Yep. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back in a couple minutes. In the meantime, check out Peter Svidler's courses on chessable.com slash Peter. He got that ahead of all the other Peters where you can buy his repertoire on the Grunfeld part one and part two. Once you're done with that, buy my course, chessable.com slash Jan on E45. And then if you still have money, but you only have like 60% of the money left, you're in luck because you can now go premium at a 40% discount using the code Grand Prix 2022 on chess24.com, giving you access to all their video series, the banter blitzes. Our boy, Jorn van Forest, who's a very strong chess player and very handsome, is giving Wrong banter move. blitz. Um, later today. Hi everyone, welcome to our new video series. My name is Jan Gustafsson and I'm thrilled to be reunited with fellow Magnus Carlsen's trainers, seconds, Peter Heine Nielsen, Magnus Carlsen's head coach and Laurent Fressinet, Magnus Carlsen's French coach, are both here and we will be going through the World Championship match 2021. Our experiences with it, the games, what we prepared, where we felt things went well, where we felt things didn't go well. Peter, we have different perspectives because we were in different locations. Very much. I'm looking forward to talking to you guys about it because you were in Thailand during all the match and I was in Dubai with the Magnus and the you know, this, this non-chess team. So I see it's some kind of debriefing where we will discuss what was the mood in Dubai, what was happening in the technical department in Thailand, and we got to sort of basically compare notes and uh, yeah, get the two kind of inside looks uh, from the match. Very much so. And Laurent, we are actually in your private home. Thanks for having us. It's a big pleasure to, to welcome both of you. And I'm sure it will be interesting to talk to you guys about the match. Likewise. So we hope you guys enjoy the series with our Behind the scenes insights. <laughs> See you then. E5, it's E5 Patsers. A complete repertoire against 1E4, based on 1E5, now available to study with Chessable's unique Move Trainer technology. The backbone is the Marshall Gambit against the Spanish, with 3 Knight F6 against the Italian. Jan Gustafsson has revisited all these lines he has played for 20 years and worked on as a second for Peter Lecco and Magnus Carlsen, amongst others, with the help of the most powerful engines out there. Leela Zero and Stockfish 10. This has led to many new discoveries and a repertoire ready to master on Chessable that can serve the student for a long chess career. Maybe E4 doesn't exist after all. E5, it's E5 Patsers. Okay, so let's send a challenge. Ah, here is challenging. Nice graphics, easy to see. Oh, what are you thinking about? You're looking how it can be the most painful? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. fine. <laughs> so that I give him up a phone. He wants to be even rude.
When I saw her for the first time, it was love at first sight. I love how rich and complex she is, how sharp and principled her first steps, how graceful her movement. Paris is a city of love. I've come to find my love for the French defense.
Welcome back to the great show where we cover the semifinals of the FIDE Grand Prix, the final leg. We already know who's qualified for the candidates, which was the main purpose, at least in my mind, of the FIDE Grand Prix to determine who would make it there. Those two players are Hikaru Nakamura, who has already finished his game today by drawing against Shah Mohamed Yarov and Richard Rapport, who's not in the semifinals. Uh, we do have one game still going between Wesley So and Tabatabai, neither of which can qualify for the candidates tournament anymore, but they can still win this event. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, for, for, I mean, getting to the semifinals is a kind of a, a very obvious breakthrough result, which will, you know, make the world more, more aware of him. But if you were to get to the final, that would be uh, fantastic. And uh he is in a bit of trouble here. He he did go for that line that I mentioned, sort of half in jest, really, of taking on c3 and then playing knight a4. Uh, I didn't really feel like it was particularly great, but uh, that that was his choice. And Wesley took on a4. I was suggesting knight e2, but knight takes a4 is still fine. Uh, I I thought maybe sort of the most ambitious way to play this with white would be to try to prove that this knight on a4 has no moves and can't really be improved and is actually stuck. And uh, uh, it is a very serious drawback. Wesley goes sort of entirely the other way. He, he says uh, the remaining two light pieces, mine is much better. If, the, if this bishop, like if you imagine this bishop being like on e5 or g6 or somewhere, it obviously is a very, very strong piece. He also has a much safer king. So it's it's very understandable why, why it should be better here. But still, I think there must have been some temptation to keep the light on a4 alive. And... Uh, yeah, Black will have to play very precisely here to to avoid drifting into a position which you might not be able to save. Queen to d2. Yeah, immediate big question coming up. Do you push e5 here or not? Because this might be the last time you have the option. Not the most tempting option in Absolutely. the world, but yeah. Point, Absolutely not. Point taken. Yeah. Um, it's... It, it's just it, it it falls i think in my mind un, under the category of doing something you know you yeah. it's this or passive defense for the for uh for the rest of the game pretty much because i don't think you can base very much counterplay on the idea of attacking the pawn on a5 once the bishop leaves the e1 square because you don't really have very good squares to attack it from uh b5 has been taken away and if you play queen d8 rook b6 is always a very good response uh, and apart from the pawn on a5, white really has no targets for black to base any kind of counterplay on, really. And if you allow bishop g3, rook fc1, your position does start looking like you're just straight up lost. Well, uh, but, but yeah, it's fair. No, okay, let's look at e5. What do we do? Do we take even bishop g3 directly? Maybe we bishop g3 say... yeah, is not stupid at all, yeah. I don't know. But let's say takes... Takes, takes, bishop g3. I guess we go queen f5, maybe, yeah? or g5, somewhere. f5, probably. Maybe there is some hope we get to play g5, d4 somewhere. Maybe even immediately here, yeah. Just play g4 and try to trade it for the a5 pawn. e4, you can take, yeah? Yeah, I can take. I'm, I'm actually probably still worse even there, despite currently being a pawn up. Like, I'm very worried here. Some kind of rook c8 check and queen d3 might be made. You know, like, it probably isn't, but... I can imagine some scenarios in which I don't know. Feels Jesus. incredibly shady, you know, with this king and the yeah, yeah. majority and whatnot. But yeah, it, it feels like if this holds for black, it holds by you know black having to make a number of only moves in a row to just not get completely steamrolled. But sometimes those moves do get found. Like I don't know what this is, and and also here suddenly you can sort of see the light at the end of the tunnel because you have gotten rid of the a five pawn, meaning that. If this becomes an endgame, you have two outside passers to rely on, and uh, you, you're at least progressing towards some kind of a quantifiable goal, whereas with passive defense, it really does look like maybe you're not going to lose in the next five moves, but your position will become horrible by that point, and uh, it's unclear whether you will ever, ever improve. Okay, Rook FC1, not forced, obviously. Absolutely not, no. 
Yeah, you can you can Even play if something. If I bore it up just to keep this yeah. pawn, you're still suffering, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, no, black is black is going to be worse for for the rest of the game. The question is how much worse and like which which type of worse you're choosing here. I think I would be very much team e five myself in my in my like my personal choice is always in these types of spots. Uh, often to the detriment of my position, I always choose you know quote unquote active counterplay, whichever you know most most closely resembles active counterplay. Right. Um, but yeah, I don't know what I mean things about these things. Spirit Tepper, reading your story there. Very sorry to hear about your friend. Yeah, what what could be the the alternative? Yeah, in particular because Bishop G three also takes away all kinds of even hopes of Rook C seven, and then eventually I don't know lending that Rooks on some on some good square. So also just really plays itself. No, let's put mm -hmm. the pieces and attack stuff, and then break through because the king is also weak. Yeah. 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 Just looks maybe you're right. Maybe he has to do this. Yeah. yeah. His issue is this knight on f6 is so far away from any kind of a sensible square. Like if you could put it, yeah, c4 is an ideal scenario, but even let's say if you could aim it towards c6 realistically to at least attack something, it may be his position. Also, it would block the c file. Yeah. C6, C6 is actually might not be worse than C4. Yeah, actually. it's actually a very, very good like second candidate for a good square. But you're just not getting there because, uh, like, you, you, the the way to, the way to get there would be via let's say G7 B8. But you can't really cross the seventh because you would immediately lose the the B7 pawn. And I mean, Queen G7 followed by Knight E8, Knight D6 is maybe like if you if you're looking for a way to continue passively, maybe this is the way. But I don't really believe in like Rook B6 stops okay. everything, right? You're not getting there, right? You're yeah, like Rook B6 just completely stops everything. You're tortured. Yeah. If if we could get to play Knight D6, like Rook FC1, Knight D6, if it if it doesn't lose by force to some kind of takes takes Rook C8 check, which it might. There's a lot of ifs in yeah. all your. Yeah. Work. But C8 yeah, or this, B6, yeah mm, this you can imagine maybe not losing, right? But you're not even getting this position. Because so 98 rook B6 yeah, pretty much ends the game, I think. Tough spot for Tabatabai. Also, the kind of positions where Wesley is exceptionally good. He's an amazing technician. And if he doesn't have to take risks, like, but mm. can just play. Natural moves, putting pressure, be precise, calculate short variations. He's as good as they come in this type of stuff. So yeah. I would say he's a pretty serious favorite to win this today. Like yeah. a favorite compared to making a draw, I would think he's yeah. more than 50% to win this. Yeah. The machine also agrees. I've I looked at the evaluations in the break. Uh, and uh, yeah, machine really just What's it giving? Let's... It's giving like plus one. Right, plus one, right. Yeah. yeah. It's giving plus good. one. And it really, really dislikes bishop takes c3. It was saying that after knight c8, uh, the line we actually gave is relevant. Knight e4 is supposed to be the give? best move here. And no, we had knight d5, but then. This, knight knight e4. Knight e4 is stronger, yeah. Knight e4, knight, knight f6, and rook f1. Uh, but it wasn't really giving white very much here. It's, it's a playable position for black. Also. But 96 so i think sense at least. yeah i think it was going rook f7 first for whichever reason but yeah this was ever so slightly better for white according to the kind of a weak engine i was watching but yeah bishop c3 it wasn't it wasn't in agreement with at all yeah rook c7 played i was also wondering about that but i don't know how you follow it up i'm pretty sure this is a pawn sacrifice like after bishop g3 he will just play rook okay. c4 it's not going back. Yeah, he goes. He goes. Rook c c four. Bishop rook, rook b seven, and then a move. But but what's the move? Queen six. Bishop rook. Queen six. Rook b six. Right. It is just yeah, awkward. There's nothing. We can't go here because there's. I think maybe that actually is it. Ring. I think he goes queen c six. Rook b six. Rook c two. I maybe also rook c seven. If we need it, but yeah. Rook c two. But maybe he what's, gets. What's mate. your point? Like all oh, of this looks. Queen c4, queen c3, but we probably get mated here. Like rook b8 check, rook b7 check, and then queen g6 is probably just forced, forced mate. Oh, that's direct. Yeah. Weirdly, we almost get mated on the other side, but we have bishop one. 
<laughs> like we're kind of lucky here because you know Queen of, no, Queen of One would be kind of mate in two. Oh, right? that's what I mean. Sorry. <laughs> uh, we it's a uh, it's a bit scary, but not very difficult to calculate. This Wesley will do. Yeah. So what else could be the explanation after rook c4, rook b7? Horrible position. Yeah. I can believe that. And the point is, like, the rooks looks ni look nice, but if you don't immediately uh, get somewhere, uh, the, the, uh, he's gone rook c6, rook b7. What does he want? Not sure. Or he just Maybe wants to make a move and uh, continue playing. Like that. Maybe this. Yeah, queen g6 seems seems like a logical follow up. Yeah, hoping to like double the rooks on the second here, like rook c2 followed by rook a2 would actually create quite a lot of counter. Oh, no, we can stop that. Obviously, yeah, we can. But then maybe <clears throat> maybe some activity is to be had. I don't know which activity, but some activity. Yeah, at least black's position is not as ugly to look at for yeah. for a moment. But rook b2 might also be playing it too safe. I don't know. Rook c1, but now there's some squares around my king, which is yeah. a little uneasy. Rook c1, rook a2, I guess, yeah, is a bit... Ah, uh, yeah, this even, yeah, yeah. Rook b2, a, are... we might still be doing very well, even here, like, rook b2. And yeah, he's played queen g6. And now Wesley will think, because it's, it's a very important turning point here. Well, turning point maybe is the wrong way to describe it, but... There might be a very good solution here, which ends the game, or you have to... Or something like answer. this, and the yeah. game continues here. Yeah. yeah. Although... Mm. Nah, I thought I saw something. It's a very interesting uh, practical choice by, I mean, by the way. Uh, also, very clearly not a fan of passive defense, but uh, if Fife was a way to create some kind of counterplay by changing the structure in the center. And he just says, yeah, B7 was very weak. I wasn't in favor of trying to defend it. So let's just give it away for squares and access to files and play from here. Yeah, looking for, looking for a way to kind of win by force and coming up very short. I don't think we can allow Ruxi to. Looking at all kinds of weird weird moves like kind of a queen d two or whatever, but they don't look right. Yeah, the queen on g six also at least for a moment safeguards the king on h seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, rook seven says Avizi. Yeah, that's actually a good move. Mm, cunning. Yeah, takes, takes. I guess the point for, for Black would be to take, take, yeah, play rook c4 here, try rook c2. And if rook c1, yeah. yeah, we take, we play queen d3, and we claim that we have an active queen. Well, we probably lose long term, right? h3, king h2, and then some, something bad will happen eventually once white safeguards the king, right? Yeah. Doesn't look like this holds. Yeah, why should it not pawn up with a safer king long term? Well, I mean, black has sort of a nice structure against the dark squared bishop with all the pawns on the light squares, which, you know, they, they cannot be targeted easily, but... Yeah. Yeah. But the light square bishop won't be desperate when it's giving mate on e5. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't really look great. And the king on h2 will be just so completely safe, which is also a huge, huge part of the evaluation here. Just just go h3, king h2. There will never be a check to that king in that game. Ooh. Pretty much. You yeah, know. I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm tempted, I am. <laughs> I, am, I am aware, yeah. I am aware. So yeah, rook c7 is a very good uh, kind of a... I don't know if it's, it might be even unfair to describe it as a kind of a fallback position because it just seems strong, honestly. It also seems like a decision that Wesley will make quite happily. Uh, he's in no hurry to win this game as long as he knows that, you know, he's progressing towards. It's a weird move to visualize, but okay. Mm. Not impossible once he go through the options of how do you stop Rook C2? Yeah, mm. not that many. 
Yeah, I mean, if you choose between Rook B, Rook B2 and Rook C7, you probably choose Rook C7, I think. Wesley taking his time, but no particular rush. He has 38 minutes plus 30 seconds increment per move for, what is it, 13 moves to make? So mm. it's not... So yeah, exactly. Shocking time trouble. No. Absolutely not. <clears throat> Oof. I'm very sleepy, which probably is not a good thing to say. What are your sleeping sleeping habits? I'm uh, trying to to get my eighty-ish hours a day, wow. as much as possible. Living the dream. Absolutely, yeah. That's that describes my life right now. To the letter. No, oh, I slept like four hours twice in a row. I just wake up. I blame the kids, obviously, but usually, I was able to fall asleep again if I had nothing going on. Not these days. Maybe, maybe it makes sense to go to sleep before 3 a.m. That's my, my new thought at mm. age 42. Yeah. Mm. No, but mainly it's, it's to do with the fact that I, as if I, I know how much of a wreck I am when I, don't get, when I don't get enough sleep for like any kind of a prolonged period. I don't seem to enjoy it, so I'm trying not to experience it. It's kind of a new thing. Identify things that don't work, try to eliminate them. That sounds smart, but not really how we've operated uh, up until this point. No? Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a new thing, as I said. Yeah, it's a, yeah, no, I like I like your thinking. <laughs> very novel approach. <laughs> Lifelong learner. Mm. Rooks is seven played. Wesley doesn't have much to learn left about the game of chess. Yeah, well, I'm sure he would disagree or. Probably any top player would disagree. Because chess is very complicated. Chess is a difficult, difficult game, yeah. Yeah, black could go rook ac4 here, but it doesn't change anything. I guess the, the same trade happens. In fact, I think the one thing that black could try, which we haven't discussed, is let's say we take on c7, we go rook c4, rook c1 here, and we try to get white to take on c4. The problem with that is, first oh, of all, exactly. Yeah, I'm not sure if we can actually force that. And secondly, and, after I took on C4, I went E4. How happy are you? Yeah, those are exactly the, the two things I was about to mention. Yeah, not sure if we can, and also we're probably not that happy about it. Let's 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 go Queen E8. Yeah, let's uh, actually continue discussing it for a second. Rook C1, Queen E8. Try to play Queen C6. Yeah, some calculation might still be needed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would assume this is winning for white, but you, you, you definitely can imagine some scenarios where it becomes very tricky. At least, mm -hmm. like if you take take e four, queen c six, you go bishop somewhere, e five, I guess c three, queen c two, knight d seven. Really, you no longer are at all sure. sure. It feels like queen too much counter play. Yeah. Queen c four. Yeah, I was thinking about playing out five, but maybe you don't even need to. Yeah, ninety-seven. Push the bishop away, then play queen c four. Yeah, you, you you get to the point where you feel like, yeah, I'm not sure I'm winning anymore. I'm not sure I'm better even anymore. And there done that. Um... So yeah, you can play bishop d six, bishop c five here, but then you run you run away into sort of similar spots, right? Ninety-seven pretty much forces you to take on c four anyway. Can we shift gears and say, I don't know how to start? Yeah, bishop five and then uh, rook somewhere. Basically, yeah. rook somewhere and say, with your queen here, I'm not too concerned about you checkmating me. Uh, yeah. We have 97. 97, sure 97 does exist. Uh, yeah, 97 does exist as a lot. Maybe I need a better move then. Maybe just here. Oh, sorry, maybe not hang the bishop. 
can go no. Oh, no. no you actually you, you have to move the bishop to uh not have to take on c4 next move right so yeah you can maybe choose a slightly better square but none of those seem ideal yeah. somehow but yeah maybe this but if bishop g3 is a move here that'd be strange still white should maintain a giant advantage somehow here rook c2 rook c1 it feels like it's clumsier than i would like it to be yeah rook c2 i mean the white attack still looks kind of more threatening but the issue is the the rooks might come off in in a way that is annoying right because you now have to deal with a slightly more active queen that yeah queen b2 check and uh, queen e2 though yeah you're probably still winning even here because a6 is hanging and the knight on f6 is still so completely detached this will will grind but probably make progress eventually oh, eventually yeah it's Although not at least for now it's not collapsing but eventually it should yeah Nimasuji says maybe do a video on all the so Nakamura Aronian quick draws better than counting ship is this uh in response to our discussion about sleep schedules or just very zeitgeisty to discuss short draws because I'm not even sure which short draws are being being discussed there because uh maybe champions chess tour the good old yeah, I, berlin the, queen, queen e4 queen e6 yeah. queen e4 queen e6 that was my best guess because yeah in, in, like in this tournament Livon and hikaru played two extremely exciting games and none of them were draws so well they did change the formula of the champions chess tour a bit to not have <laughs> yeah as many of those ideally yep rook c4 on the board yeah, you assume rook c1 because otherwise like the only other move you can even make is bishop g3 because otherwise rook c2 just wins <laughs> so uh yeah and bishop g3 is just not a very natural move here to to be contemplating nah, he will play rook c1 yeah, he will play rook c1 and then i think queen e8 is by far the best practical chance because hmm. the queen needs to be on the queen side somewhere and then we'll see what Wesley thinks about the various options. There might be a very good technical solution. Uh, takes, takes, e4, queen c6. I want to play bishop g3, c3, queen c2, queen c4, bishop e1 and king h1 fancy but that like I, isn't good i mean if i win the c4 pawn i probably yeah queen c4 is actually more annoying than i thought yeah i probably don't win the c4 pawn here okay shelved yeah i, I thought i can play h3 here then i realized no not a very good move no i still liked our line However, we got here best like this, this. Yeah, yeah probably, probably the, the the most solid option. Mm. Mr. So. Have you ever counted sheep to fall to fall asleep? I don't think I have now. I've tried it. It didn't seem very effective to me. Like, I, to me, for me, it required a lot of energy to even picture sheep jumping over that fence or whatever they're supposed to do. Mm. So I had to be so focused to visualize the sheep crossing the fence that there was no way I would fall asleep while having to picture that and counting them. Like, it's au contraire. Seems like a way to stay awake when you're very sleepy. So I'm not sure where that time honored wisdom is coming from. Spirit yeah. Tapper once got to 56,735, I believe. Yeah, and uh, I mean, in particular, now that audiobooks exist, I, I no longer really feel there's any need for any other sleep aids 
Yeah, I use podcasts, but same idea. Like I put my whatever you call it, sleep timer that switches itself off um, to 40 minutes usually, but I never make it to the 40 Yeah, exactly. Minutes. The, the, the only drawback is, in particular, if it's a good book, you just end up listening to it like four times. Ah, I only listen to a crappy podcast. I never. So you never actually go back and. Uh... No, no, no. I never revisit. <laughs> okay. Because yeah, that, that that's that's the only the only real issue I have with my current method is that like I I tend to I tend to enjoy the books I'm listening to, and then you have to go back and like you you, you put the bookmark there, and you know that you probably fell asleep like ten to twelve minutes after the effort of clicking put bookmark there. So you you scroll back there and you try to locate the last thing you remember, and yeah, it's it's inefficient as a book reading method, but method, but it's very efficient as a What's your your current audiobook tips? As in what to what to listen to? Yep. Uh, as a a friend recommended to me the very very specific because I think there's more than one a very specific reading of the entire Master and Commander series. Oof. It's like twenty books, Oof. so that will last you a while. It's read by a particular British actor who is very, very good. And I think without his voice, it probably wouldn't have been as enjoyable, but um, yeah, uh, I did that. Currently, I'm listening to in kind of a break of, you know, change of pace. I'm listening to some Russian literature. So you're done with the 20 audiobooks on yes. Master and Commander? Yes. How many hours would that be if it's a full version? Like what was one book, like 10 hours? 13-ish, yeah. 13-ish. That's some serious mastering and commandering. Absolutely. But that, that that's a that's an old recommendation. It took me like a year, I think, to go from 1 to 20. Hmm. It did take a while. I did 20 years. <laughs> Somebody is suggesting an audiobook where they count sheep. That's not a bad <laughs> idea because then you don't have to go through the trouble of doing the counting and the visualizing. It's not a bad idea at all. Yeah, I think I think that's that's a startup waiting to happen. If it doesn't exist yet. Yeah, let's my, my voice is not quite smooth enough, but it's that's the kind of content I could see myself doing. Mm. How do you know it's counting sheep though? What's the difference between just, that and someone just saying one, two, three, four? I think I think you just say sheep at the end of it. Like you say one sheep, two sheep, three sheep, four sheep. Mm. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. Might be a bit too cheap, but it's worth worth pondering. Um, yeah, we guessed Queen E8 correctly, and now we're... Ah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. And you have to have low-volume bass going on in the background. Now we're talking. Yeah. So to get some, yeah, sheepishly. Make it clear what it's about. Hmm. Sorry, you you were saying something about Wesley and the, the position. Not really the position. I just mentioned that you know Queen Eight has been played. It is it is Patrick Tal, yeah, pioneer. He is very very good. Hmm. As usual, on the Master and Commander topic, I've only seen the movie. And even that movie, I was mildly bored. It felt long, and Russell Crowe was in a bad mood. Uh, so I'm not sure I'm up for 20 books. But probably the books are much better than the movie, as usual, as well. I think, the, surprisingly, I think the, the, it's, it's one of those cases where they, they actually did the movie as faithfully to the books as they, as they could. and uh... felt like that, yeah. It wasn't much up. Yeah, I mean, it, it is very, you know, uh, slow paced in general, you know, and if you're not into prolonged descriptions of naval battles, you probably won't enjoy it that much. But um, we are discussing 
you know things to get you to sleep so if you we're actually doing the the sheep's sheep audiobook right now mm. <laughs> yeah. 28 Bishop G3, Queen C6, Rook B1. You're feeling very tired. Yeah, your lids, your lids become heavy, and uh, your breath slows down, <clears throat> and your advantage dissipates. And then you have to play black the next day, and you feel why? Why haven't I paid more attention to this position? <clears throat> Bishop G three, is there? They could have done it in the other in the other order, right? I'm wondering if after Queen C six you can actually just take on C four, because G takes C four, we can play Bishop B one and then play E four, and then the pawn probably never crosses the. Sorry, here D C. What do you want? Bishop B one. Oh. I think this works because Knight D five, E four, C three, Queen C two. I got the same position with a very very important extra tempo. And queen c4 never happens. Neither four happens though. Maybe I've still not solved all of my tactical issues here. G3 might win. I don't know. Yeah, good point. The bishop gets all the way back. Yeah. I mean, could consider playing queen b5, by the way, in the current position instead of queen c6. Just to, after bishop g3, just to stop rook b1 from happening. And I guess bishop b1 still happens, right? You you can't really. Or takes. No. Or takes, yeah. I, I thought maybe this is a slight improvement. I'll, I don't know why. I don't know why this. I thought this was a better version for black. Because e4, bishop b1 still happens. <clears throat> yeah. See, Beach is saying, when I can't sleep, I just look at a Slav exchange. That does make sense since you're awake anyway. You might as well study some exciting opening. But how is that? How is it helping with your with your sleeping issues? Gukeli says, I can't really say I understand why white would have such a big advantage here. It's mainly to do with the fact that they have more pawns. But, you know, on a, on a less snarky note, bishop is very strong here, has a lot of very good squares. The knight on f6 is... You are unsure where to even kind of aim it towards. e8, d6 maybe. Like, it doesn't really have any particularly attractive targets because the c4 square seems kind of unavailable. And white has a safer king. Um, this pawn but, is quite good. If this pawn went here, it would change yeah. the pawn. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's specifically because uh, the knight on f6 is very, very restricted. Because as I mentioned, uh, the, the black structure is sort of about as good uh, in response to you know the material on the board as, as it can be because none of the remaining pawns really can be targets for for the white bishop but the king is not very safe with the f7 pawn gone and the knight is extremely passive yep like the same position with the, with the black having the bishop on f8 let's say you would feel black pr probably has decent drawing chances in particular in particular if the rooks come off right if you're no longer threatening to give mate so we don't have the knight then Oh, yeah, yeah, like Black just has a bishop on f8 is actually a good square. Put it on f6, which is a worse square. Even with a bishop on f6, let's say if the rooks come off and Black puts the queen on b5 and plays, I don't know, king f7 or whatever, I think it probably is decent ish drawing chances for Black. But this knight is just so completely cut off from any good squares. So you're saying if the knight was a bishop and the rooks were gone? Would be better for black. Then the current. Better than it is currently, yeah. Mm -hmm. Better than it is currently. Very important thought exercise. Yeah, thanks. 
if you know you you have you have a position to, to study and you study it by imagining a completely different position which has no relation to this one and cannot be transposed to in any way well it can make you feel worse about the position you have yeah that would be counterproductive it's no longer how we do things no no if all the pieces and pawns were gone, it would probably be a draw, says Tapres. You are not wrong. That is a factual statement. No. It probably ruins the statement, though. It would certainly be a draw. Mm. Speaking of draw, the other game ended in such a draw. Quite a while back, obviously, Nakamura already qualified in his very, very impressive comeback to a tournament chess, just qualifying for the candidates by, yeah, playing amazingly well in these two feeder group races played. Wanted to take it easy today. Did, yeah, maybe take it a little too easy. Got a slightly shady position somewhere around here. Didn't look like much, but computer gives black. Yeah, whatever. Half a pawn advantage after rook fd8 already. Um, but instead of the d5, he found this. Nice little move, bishop a4. Threatening to win a piece by capturing everything. Therefore, not giving black time to achieve what he wants, like rook c8. Runs into c takes d5. So he had to go rook fd8 when we were expecting bishop c6, but Nakamura found a more direct solution based on the rook having to take here. Because bishop d5 once again drops a piece. And after rook d5, bishop c6, bc95. There's not enough winning potential left in the game. Quickly ended. Peacefully. Yep. That is what happened. In the meantime, yeah, queen b5 was the choice for, for Amin. We can probably still take, we can also spend the tempo on bishop b1 here since it appears that the bishop is headed there anyway, but it only... Wesley, yeah. Wesley is no nonsense. He will just take yeah. DC E4. This part is not moving. We're just winning, though. No? Like, yeah, we should be. We should be winning because that knight is really not not headed anywhere. And yeah, Queen E1. Uh, sorry, Bishop E1 and Queen B4 and Bishop C3. Like yeah, Queen. If if wins if if wins come off, it becomes a very very trivial win. And if the queens don't come off, Black has to beat beat a retreat and. It gets it gets progressively worse. And if the queen takes, what do you do? Yeah. Now we don't have to play bishop one, so I would start with h three. Like I think, I'm I'm a compulsive h three player in this position. <laughs> just just make sure nothing happens. Create the h two square for the king, and then we look for ways to activate the queen. Yeah, like queen b two, queen b six, or whatever. And eventually we start generating threats. does look fairly convincing. Yeah. So what do you choose as black? Do you choose queen takes and then kind of lose slowly but very surely? Or you choose d takes and then hope to generate some kind of counterplay miraculously? I think... I'm taking with the queen because I can't even yeah, stand can... looking at this position if I don't see a way to push c3. I don't know. I go like queen b3 here, which b1, I assume. I go knight e8. Queen whichever. Queen c3 or knight d6? Or... Knight d6 or knight c7, yeah. You can play queen b4, I go knight c7. And uh, yeah, if it gets to b5, it becomes kind of moderately interesting, right? I'm sort of assuming yeah, you're yeah. still you're still losing to precise play here, I think. But no, like, no, but point taken. Yeah. Yeah, it might it might actually need to be quite precise. Yeah, allowing c three, c two is really not on. So bishop one seems to be semi forest and yeah, ninety eight. Yeah, rook takes this. This might become. Quite do some, <laughs> something faster yeah, here. Something like d5 wins, yeah. This is a very good shout. Just start our own play. Stop black from being so comfortable. 
with their, you know, I mean, black isn't really very comfortable, but, you know. Yeah, it's full played, yeah. It's on the board, yeah? DC mm -hmm. E4. Mm -hmm. So now the question is how, how Amin continues from here. He, he could throw in some kind of King H7 just to take maybe some sting out of the D5 ideas, but. Mm. I start with ninety eight to confuse you. Still go d five. Yeah, this is an interesting question. Yeah, do you go do you go d five here or no? E d queen takes looks very very unclear to me. Right, you. This is not how you normally want to play these end games. Yeah. yeah. Oh no. Might be. No, it doesn't look very good. No. And here, my point is, even c three queen c three queen d five is. No, bishop e5 yeah. is strong there, yeah. Well, maybe a check. A queen c5 yeah. check is good, yeah. Queen c5 check is a smart move. No, this actually, I, I, can, I can very easily imagine not winning this for white. Huh? Yeah, agreed. So probably we don't go d5. That was just. Yeah, curious. we can make a waiting move of some sort. Yeah, no, I was hoping then to go queen b3 mm -hmm. next move if you play whatever this. this. All of a sudden. Yeah, d5c3 is very unclear. And bishop e1, knight c7 is also on knight d6, even. Yeah. Okay, h3 probably is not the move. Though. Yeah, has to be something, something clever. So we currently like knight d8 the most, I guess, yeah? Knight d8, maybe bishop b 5 and then d5 yeah i was kind of hoping to mm. cut some of the counterplay off any trickery I take take cooking if the king king is in the corner oh the king is there so king is there not much trickery yeah yeah looks reasonable enough mm. you start with queen b3 start with queen b3 that which is yeah i mean this probably forces bishop b1 but then d5 becomes much stronger in reply to any kind of a knight move it's also nice to be forced to play moves. No, you don't have to think about options. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm only half kidding. Like ninety-eight, at least you have to take some decision. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I absolutely am in agreement with you here. Yeah. So how do we? Can we go king h seven here? My issue is, at some point, it will become playable to take to like play queen c three and take on b three next move, but maybe not yet, mm -hmm. because the knight comes to c four very, very quickly. If I keep doing my favorite thingy, well, I'm 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 unhappy about takes takes and some kind of c three or queen d three, but how unhappy are you? Um, I don't know. Yeah, let's try c three. I give it. He goes knight d eight. So he... Ah, he does. He does go for for the light. Yeah, this I don't like. This I feel is. Um, I, it might sound harsh, but it feels like this is the decision of a man who doesn't really believe he will save the game, so he is not really willing to invest too much time in uh, you know choosing between things which probably lose in the end run anyway. Harsh. Because yeah, this the, like d5 looks crushing here. How does it go? Ed take with the queen and then queen takes and then. We... Tech king. I don't even know there's no tempting square, but yeah. Even something like I don't know, Queen E5 here and then Bishop C3. Just seems completely lost. <clears throat> I don't think any of these uh, these things are a perp because it, it gets to G3. And king of one, king of two. Yeah. He gets to g3 and there are no more checks. And once I've established the queen e5, bishop c3 thing, it's completely unshakable. And then I will once again <laughs> compulsively play h3, king h2. Yeah. Oh, this is neither four, neither four, actually. This is this is a game, yeah? Oh, maybe this is maybe this is more of a game than I thought. I don't know if this works, but... Yeah, king h4 might be winning. Um... Yeah, something like this. D5 on the board in the meantime, yeah. Unsurprisingly, it just looks right. 
Also, I guess, you know, on, on the topic of being slightly more precise, I can go queen d4 instead of queen e5. I don't know why I play queen e5. Just stop queen e3 check all altogether. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Also, also queen d8. Uh, queen sure d8 might be winning, yeah. But, yeah. yeah. but if, like, if all else fails, just go queen d4 here. And then and then get to the same setup with the bishop on c3. And yeah, once it lands there, the weakness of the g7 g7 pawn means that there is never any counterplay. And then eventually, white starts making progress. And white well, does have four versus two on the king side, so you can just mm. yeah. and the better light piece win by pushing and the safer king. So yeah, ed played maybe king f8 is the best choice, but I don't know if it really changes enough. Like I can go. I assume there is some forced wins, but also even once again, queen, still like this. Or queen five, yeah, all of those things are probably still just completely winning. Might be a slightly better option, but it doesn't really change the the underlying evaluation. Even this, what you're gonna do? Yeah, this queen d one, queen c five check actually loses the pawn with check somewhat. Oh, that's helpful. Somewhat funnily, yeah. I it's just want to run, but yeah, <clears throat> this is better. No, yeah, h3 always very efficient. Yeah, king h7. Now we'll see what what Wesley feels about these things. Because yeah, I, I mean there is some suspicion that you can maybe even afford to go like queen f5 check, queen e6 check, queen takes a6 to be really really greedy. But yeah, nobody does that. I'm pretty sure. Like it's completely unnecessary to even calculate. Well, I mean here I take the knight obviously. So you have to go kind of, you have to go to f8 and I take on a6 here. I mean, it might be playable. It's just that, like, it's so completely strange to even force yourself to calculate because, like, queen e three, queen d three, queen d four, checks start, and yeah, no need. And the check from e five, and it gets a bit awkward. Yeah, I mean, it's fairly people, awkward. No? Like, yeah, yeah, might like, win, but <laughs> yeah. might, might maybe win you're more. winning. Yeah, but like, there, there's just absolutely no reason to do it. Yeah. No, it's set up. Queen takes a6. Yeah, we can still go h3. Still exists, no, like h3 or h4 or whatever. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Just safeguard the king and then you will. You will well, once our king is safe, we will checkmate ourselves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, Bishop we, here is pretty good. Mm -hmm. We'll just win, win by force. Do they play the second game today too? No, this is, no, this is not a two game per day tournament. They, they will play tomorrow. And the two game per day tournament is also on a bit of a break. They will restart in the in the dark of the night for for Europeans. Four a.m. Four a.m. here, which is what three a.m. your time? Oh, perfect. I'll be up. Ah oh, no, we talked about changing that up earlier. There's a question in Peter's book club. Hmm. Someone started IQ and wants to know if it is Joe's best, I guess. That's the first one. What's I his name? Joe Ide? Joe Ide? Or not? Ide, yeah, I think. Ide? I, think. I had no idea. I don't, I, like, I've only read the, the, the series. In the series, I think the first book is the best one, but I was unaware of the author until somebody pointed out that the series exists. Um, what do you mean by you've only read the series? What what else could you have done? He has written more than just the series about Kintana. Ah, okay. So you're saying, as for the series IQ, this is his best book, but you can't yeah. do his other work. Yeah, he is. I understood. I've only read the first one, but I, I did enjoy it greatly. Mm, yeah, it's, it's a... some nice light reading. Mm. Or, yeah, not because for me, I don't have your vocabulary. So, unironically, sometimes I have to force myself to read in English. Like in German, I can, yeah, understand most of the words. In English, it's a bit of an effort. And there, the English was light enough that it didn't distract me mm. from, from being English. So, you could read it without yeah. having to look stuff up. And yeah, it was very Also, dope. actually, in, in my case, those are, those are actually also audiobooks. All five of them. Oh, okay, so you you've actually never read a book. So no, not no. only have you never read a poker book, you've <laughs> never read a book. Period. You just listen to books. Yes, I yeah. Hmm. Things are things are becoming clearer now. This entire 
you know, bookish persona is just a lie. Yeah. You're just a, a listenish persona. If only they had chess theory audiobooks. <laughs> That's not your, stop yeah, that would be that would be very, very useful, yeah. Maybe somebody should get on Chessable that. if you're watching. Yeah. Yeah, I'm curious what he finally ends up playing in this position because yeah, it feels like it's difficult to go badly wrong, but I have a feeling his choice will be the cleanest because I really trust Wesley in positions like this and yeah, wonder what the cleanest is. Hmm. Also, often the cleanest humanly doesn't have to be the cleanest computerishly, hmm. right? They, they hmm. might be. But sometimes you get some plus two position that is some easily winning endgame or whatnot, while the computer's plus seven or whatever is some weird long move by move sequence. Then again, Wesley, pretty good at calculating. He might just calculate his way home here. Yeah, he's gone queen of five checking g8, which is an interesting starting point. But maybe like this slightly improves Queen E5 lines, maybe by creating a stronger threat. But no, I don't think so. Yeah, curious because oh, the line not Queen E6, King of Eight, and, and then just H3. You can throw in H3 at at any point. And yeah, maybe maybe getting the King to F8 is better because yeah, any check by the Bishop now is basically made, mm -hmm. uh, which is a useful thing to have at your disposal. H3 or H4, yeah, yeah. Most trash tried listening to my system. It was terrible. Yeah, but you can't blame the audio for that. <laughs> also, I read that I read that message, and I legitimately thought he was talking about uh, the the super system there for a second, and I, <laughs> and I thought, yeah, outdated, but I wouldn't say terrible. And and then I realized, why would I'm, you know? I wouldn't. Sorry, it's a it's a <laughs> recurring plot point. If you. If you're confused what we're talking about, yeah. Peter is often shamed on this show for never having read a poker book. We don't know why. He's not required to, but somehow, yeah, yeah. keeps coming up. Also, you, we must remember the origin, sort of the origin story of that origin story, which was, you know, all of that was prompted by me being a much worse poker player than Jen Shahadi. She probably did read poker books. She probably wrote some, maybe even. Um, I found a I found a line which ends in white getting mated, so I'm very excited. Uh, Queen e five, knight f six, bishop c three, couple of checks, king g three, knight h five, king h four, queen takes g two. And I tried making the king takes h5 work, and I realized queen takes f3 is actually made. Well, not made. I mean, you can, I can go queen h4, king h4, and g5, queen g5. But it's not great. Not a disclaimer. Yeah. This is kind of cute, yeah? Probably yeah. completely irrelevant, I, I assume. It's the actually, kind of thing I could see myself missing after having calculated intensely for 20 minutes. Oops, queen f3, checkmate. But Wesley is not going to miss. Yeah, Wesley is not going to miss any of that. or probably even get involved with any of that. I assume there are some ways along the way to avoid even having to to calculate that. Actually, even even towards the end of there, like if you can uh, get us there again, because it's it's like it's a, it's a semi relevant calculation. Because at any point in that line, if we get a tempo to play H three, we just win. So this makes sense. Black needs to start giving checks because yeah allowing h3 is death so you give check check we have to avoid them we have to go to g3 once again knight h5 is the only source of counter play and i think i think maybe the win here is to go king h3 knight of four king g4 and here i don't think i'm getting mated after queen g queen g4 king queen g2 king f4 right 
because you I'll say you're not trying, but yeah. Yeah, I am. I am very much trying, but I don't like E3 is an important square, and you can't really cut me off from it. I think after that, I probably will avoid it. I avoid a perpetual. So this might actually be a forced win for white. Weird as that as that might sound. Um, because if you give me a move here, I will find a useful move to make, which will stop the counterplay. I don't know which move, but some move. G3 maybe. I don't know. Yeah, Wesley. Not surprisingly, taking a moment here to figure all these things out. Because yeah, you don't want to allow anything. You don't want to have to walk with a king around. You don't want to allow c3. Yeah. So he's taking his time. He's gone back to d5. Yeah. Always like just sort of cutting down the number of moves is also very sensible. Just making sure. I assume king h7 gets blitzed out. Yeah. And yeah. So this is old advice that when you're better, you should repeat the position once to mess with your opponent. I never, like I understand getting closer to the time control, but I never had the feeling it messed with your opponent. Normally when you're worse, you're very happy to blitz out the repetition yeah. and to no, I, make yeah. your opponent think again. This, this actually has never really been given to me as an explanation for why you should do it. It just gets you closer to the time control. I don't think it messes with your opponent at all. Yeah, but like Getting that... closer to the time control only helps if you're below on the clock no, or maybe if you're winning and you want to make sure nothing happens but for me normally taking the decision to repeat once takes longer than the 30 seconds exactly yeah. by it, by... no but just sort of getting to move 40 where you can actually like sit down and even though with this time control it really doesn't give you very much it's not a, like you don't get an hour for 20 so yeah it's not like in the good old days hmm uh, Sports Hefe says Wesley really will be the forgotten man in this Grand Prix. His only mistake was losing in the rapid tiebreak to uh, Lanier. Yeah, he could have been. He could have been very much uh, in the running. Obviously, like he was not a lock to beat whoever he was going to be facing in the in the semis. He was going to play Levon, right? If he won, because Lanier played Levon. Uh, wouldn't wouldn't have been an easy tie, an easy semi final for him in the first Berlin leg. But yeah, Wesley Wesley clearly. Uh, I mean, first off, he was very, very unlucky not to win the group outright with plus two. He scored plus two in the first in the first uh, Grand Prix, and that wasn't enough to win the group, which is quite something considering how how few games there are. And then he lost that that rapid tiebreak to Linier. Yep. No, in general, yeah, he seems destined for this type of format. He's so solid, but will usually win a game, or at least a game in the in the group stage. And then, yeah, good luck. Good luck beating him in the knockout stage. But yeah, losing a tiebreak, of course, can happen to anybody. Yeah, but uh, yeah, Linier had to win round six on demand to even get get mm -hmm. to that tiebreak. So yeah, well, obviously, well played to him and taking nothing away from from him, but. Well, so as I was saying this, I wasn't sure if my claim that Wesley should be good at knockout formats actually holds water by results. I don't think he's ever gone that What's deep in any of the World Cups or whatever. What's his best round in the World Cup? Yeah, I can't think of it, which probably Has is he the played very many finals or semifinals. Yeah, I also might be old age. I can't picture him playing that many. What happened? Yeah, I think I think he's actually missed quite a few for whichever reason. Um, but yeah, I don't think he ever got to the semis. He must have been in some quarters. He's way too strong of a player not to have been in some quarters. But um, obviously, it's something that could be looked up. But we will trust chat to to, to actually do that. Wesley, time is running out. Absolutely. 13 minutes for three moves. Panic stations, make a move now. He did with, he, yeah, uh, as, as bouncing, uh, bouncing Across says, he did win the 960 World Championship knockout. Yeah, he, yeah, is, yeah. he is genuinely a, um, a monster in the 960. Not not very many people beat Magnus the way he beat him in the final in, in, in any kind of format. Hmm. 
Come on, Wesley. Make a move. Yep. Do it. If you can't make the candidates, at least make a move. At least make a move. He goes h3 here. Yeah, completely winning. Yeah, I while yeah. while all tabbing to to get the the World Cup results, I briefly had the tab with the game open. The best line here is plus six. H3 is like like plus three and a half, That's which enough. is really really unsurprising. Not none of this really is surprising at all. Hmm. So how does it go? We we pin you. Just king of two, king g three. I assume, yeah. It's just you walk out, it. yeah. And you can't really get the queen to a square where, like, if you play c three here, it loses to a number of things. I guess the simplest is just queen of five check and then queen e five, and then yeah, just collect. Ah, oh, Wesley was in the uh, in the semis in Belize. Oh, right. Who did he play? Uh he. I assume he lost to Ding Liren, right? He because the other semi was MVL against Livon, right? That one, I think I recall. But yeah, I, this can't, the... I can't recall what happened in the. Yeah, he lost. He lost to Ding, I guess. Yeah, I, I. The match doesn't really immediately comes to mind. No, same here. I very much recall the live on MVL, yeah. but there was that also one, an that epic, one was um, yeah. That one everybody remembers. Um, ding. So. Yeah, so they played a long one as well. Yeah, they. They drew the classicals kind of quietly ish. There was a Joko Piano with Wesley on the white side, which was very quiet, and the other one was uh, a kind of a hedgehog slash Catalan, which Ding Liren was better in for the most part, but didn't win. And then they drew the first two rapids. And then he lost with white in some kind of a symmetrical Grunfeld and didn't really uh, get back in the in the return game. That's tremendous researching right there. Thanks, yeah. Peter. Very important <clears throat> groundbreaking research. So. Yeah, Kiaria says Tabatabai lost to Vitigov with black and then uh, beat him with the white pieces in the uh, in the pool stages. So he has he has hopes for tomorrow. Absolutely, the match is not over. But beating beating Wesley on demand, even though I'm pretty sure it has been done before, is not an easy task. King H seven. Yeah, curious. Wesley making a move on demand also not an easy task. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's kind of important to actually make a move at some point, but I'm pretty sure he'll manage. Yeah, I would, I would say he's much more than 99% to make a move in the next eight minutes. Like, how often does a player lose on time here with eight minutes on the clock? It uh, never happens, right? It's not one of a thousand, it's one out of 10,000. Yeah, it doesn't really... I mean, uh, like I asked... Move, move. I think we've heard stories, and I think maybe Ivan Chuk, yeah, falling, you know, falling safe yeah. or something. But yeah. yeah, people just sort of forgetting the clock exists in safe positions is a thing that you know, is rumored to have happened. But yeah, but what's the what's the number? It's I don't know, a very large number. I have no idea. 
it has to be absolutely minuscule probability. I don't know, one in 10,000 does sound like. Also, there's always this famous oh. anecdote, if it's an anecdote that I've never checked, that oh. Grishuk lost on time once in his life, something like that. No, that's including all the non increment hmm. games. I don't know, the number might be up. It's an old story. What I'm trying to say in time travel, people make mistakes, but losing on time is very, very rare. Even yeah, it's. It, it, it happens much rarer than people think, yeah. In particular in classical, I've lost on time reasonably recently in very hilarious circumstances. But what until happened? then, hmm? I, I, I was playing against Shakriar in St. Louis last year in the Rapid. I was completely winning from most of the game and then made it difficult and then made it not winning but i was still better just probably a draw by this point and i was i thought i prepared a very cute trick and then midway executing the move that i thought was like the the, the idea of a very cute trick i realized that move blunders a full rook to a fork and we were very much blitzing by that point so like there wasn't much time but i thought i had clock under con the clock under control so i kind of sat there basically giggling to myself and not even to my i, th I thought i was kind of semi semi audibly giggling at the idea of blundering a rook in that position and i put the king back and any other move is just an immediate draw maybe i'm, I'm even slightly better and i was just sitting there kind of giggling <laughs> and then i realized maybe i should make a move but by the time i actually did make a move I already lost on time. I thought I had like 25 seconds. I had like 13. It's a big difference. <laughs> yeah. It's not the time to giggle. Any time is the time to giggle, I would argue. Like my counter argument would be that statement is never correct. But um... so your team giggle, giggle, giggle. Yes, I'm team LA giggle. <laughs> Kek wiggle. Really? What is going on though, Wesley? Where, where are you? Yeah, I really don't know why the move hasn't been made. I mean, jokes aside, con you know, especially considering that pretty much most moves here, which aren't a blunder of a bishop, win quite comfortably. I, I don't know what's taking him that long, but. Here's another check. Queen f5, king will go back to g8. Mm -hmm. Now it's important not to go queen d5, which yeah, I've done in similar be, situations. Be that would be one too many because of the threefold repetition. But there's still time to play h3 or queen e6. Yeah, or queen e6 followed by h3. Yeah, or, um... or maybe queen d7. How does this work? What kind know. of move is that? Yeah, I mean, you can do that. Just trying to get to your square. Yeah, yeah. Not, yeah you could, could have gotten there easier with <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> from the previous move. Yeah, I mean, so sort of we're grateful to Wesley for providing us with, an, you know, a bit of intrigue for. Yeah, Queen very grateful. Played, yeah, very grateful, yeah. King of eight. King of eight, yeah, and uh, interestingly, h3 is not in the top three lines on my screen right now. Oh, while you keep praising it, or is it? While Queen D7 is. <laughs> Boom. Queen D7, very strong. I will never underrate Queen D7. But you mean, I, I mean, it, instead of Queen D6? Anyway. Oh, here, here. After King of Eight? Yes. That's even weirder. <laughs> that is actually kind of weirder than the other one, yeah. But it's, it's on my screen, so I'm telling you. I trust your screen. Yeah, my screen is very strong. Yeah, I wonder how h3 doesn't make it in the... I mean, it doesn't throw, but it makes it slightly slightly trickier. What's the problem? In d1, king f2, c3, which I didn't, didn't understand. Ah, takes check. You're still losing after queen, c, queen c4 and then bishop b4 check, but you have to win the queen ending, which Oof. is... The other lines don't even allow the queen ending, even though it's a two pawns up queen ending, which is probably not that difficult if we're entirely honest with ourselves.
because the bottom a5 is not actually falling here. King d4 check, yeah, could king e2 here. One more checks. It's on h4, which is, I assume, very similar to the line we've just discussed. Yeah. Generally, h3 felt cozier. Mm, yeah. But h4, maybe there's one line or two where the king could use a square on h3. Who knows? Yeah. I'd just be worried that this pawn is hanging in some some of these random lines, but probably mm -hmm. it never is. Yeah. So, so if, if you don't play queen d1 here, you're completely lost. You have to do this. And it's also important to play c3 without queen c2 check. I think this is what, what is missable here, because if you if you give a check first and then play c3, you just lose that pawn to queen e5, for instance, because it doesn't go anywhere. Um, so yeah, if he does go queen, queen d1 and c3, the game might be... Uh, <clears throat> might run for a bit longer because I think you know whatever the queen ending is you feel like you probably have better drawing chances than you have had before uh -huh. but you're still losing it but do you think Wesley's missed c3 at this point I would guess I'm, not, but... I'm not sure yeah I'm not sure I mean the the recovery line you know such as it is what what you're showing on the screen right now is not very difficult so. Maybe he is just kind of certain he is winning this queen ending and he is fine with it. 20 minutes for I mean now to find queen d1. How long is it going to take? Over under. Um, judging by the previous, he probably will not spend too much time on this decision, but I don't know, three minutes. Wow. And he's already spent two. So, one more minute. One more I minute. would think longer. Yeah, I think that was... I, actually, I said three minutes before realizing to have already been spent, so... But even three minutes from here, I would think longer. We shall see. Painted myself into a corner here a little bit. All ah. right, though, Queen D1. Why do I ever doubt you? Yeah. Played quickly and confidently. Two minutes, 37 seconds. Boom. Yep. King f2, he will also play. Most likely, yeah. And after c3, there is a, an additional option, which I don't think you take. I think you actually calculate and go for the queen ending. Uh, you have the option after c3 of playing queen f5 check. Ah, you want to exchange queens here? Yeah? yeah, king f2, c3. Sorry, king f2 here. Check. You have to go to g8, and now you go queen d5 check, and uh, you have bishop d2 in the end there. But after knight d6... You will have to trade the C pawn for the A5 pawn. And I really, really don't think anybody does that. Even if you are kind of, you probably very strongly suspect you're winning here. But I don't think anybody does that. <laughs> because you, you legitimately might not win this anymore <laughs> if things go wrong with the outside passer on the A file. Queen D4. Oh, oh, oh. Queen D4. Played oh. very quickly. Played very quickly. Maybe he has given up here. Yeah? Like it's move 41. It really He's blitzing Once, out. Yeah, but why is this? Yeah, king g3, c3. How do we? We just go queen c6 and it falls, yeah? Yeah, my, my three minutes was obviously based on what I said earlier about him just not believing yeah. he has any, any chances to save it. And, and then you just kind of, yeah. I guess just queen c6, right? And, and you just have queen e5, I go king h3 and... No more checks and the pawn is gone. This is it. Yeah. This is the end of the game pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. G3 played. I mean, where else? Anything else doesn't really save you from a perpetual. Yeah. Yeah. 
I don't think I'm missing anything. Yeah, C three played, and yeah, apparently the the harshest way to win here is Bishop F two, which kind of gives mate. Well, I mean not mate, but it forces you to play Queen D six, and we actually can win a piece by playing Bishop C five and then returning to A three. Uh, but it's unnecessary. Or maybe ED. Yeah, ED or whichever. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think both both queen c six and queen b three as well is, I mean they are comfortable enough not to look for more. Ah, she queen c six loses the a five pawn. This is why this is why he's gone for this. He he wants to go queen e five check and then take on a five. It's still losing, but also horrible. But yeah, yeah, yeah. at least only one pawn down. Yeah, bishop takes and queen queen b five and whatever. Yeah. I mean you're losing. You take. Even, even, yeah. yeah, I think even that then game is completely lost. But yeah. can we do better? Mm. Yeah, I think queen b three actually, because I think here you get mated. If you take on a five here, you actually get mated again. I think that's the difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was wondering why the engine was preferring queen b three here to queen c six. And as mentioned, there is bishop f two, which if you don't want to resign immediately, I guess you play queen b four. But then you probably lose to, like, can I do this now? Queen c six, or I'm thinking maybe queen, maybe some kind of a quiet move like queen d five just wins on this. Ah, just to keep the king, yeah. <laughs> just keep the king there and go bishop c five check eventually, and looks hopeless. Yeah, you are kind of getting mated now. Like you, you, you eventually have to play queen d six check and. Hmm. afterwards it's also move 40 whatever it is too so wesley can actually spend some time here finding the cleanest the cleanest yeah. solution black is just too lost yes yeah. he's getting mated and he's losing every end game where the c4 doesn't quit yeah. easily, so. no, but also wesley doesn't really i i assume like some people wouldn't mind but i think wesley is so good at kind of efficient chess that he really doesn't want to spend an additional hour there even if at no point during that hour he will be in any doubt of winning. So, you know, investing five minutes here into something that ends the game right away is worth it. Do you think that's a generational thing? Because he was brought up with engines, he also thinks more like instead of just I don't know, trying to reach a position that's easily winning or that's winning by hand. He could go for a quicker solution. I don't know if you could hear the doubt in my voice as I was speaking. I'm not yeah, sure. It's not, it's not that. I think I think it's specifically. I think we've watched some people very happily not really look for. I think Magnus might be a good example of that, where he he's just fine playing a game for an additional hour if he is absolutely sure that he will he will win it. He is, you know. Yeah. No, my point was I think with Magnus we compared his thinking might also be more schematic sometimes he won't care if it's only given yeah whatever plus one if he's sure he's gonna win win some end game while yeah wesley i believe will calculate yeah his way home here yeah. yeah not that magnus wouldn't but yeah you get the idea mm, yeah, yeah and for me like i think i'm also team calculate here but for a different reason sure. i just i just uh like I tend to mistrust my boring endgame technique. So if I feel like there might be a move here which actually ends the game and doesn't like makes me not play a four against two, which I might not win. Even even if the, like I, I'm generally confident enough in my assessments, like I would know that this this position we just discussed where C3 pawn is traded for the A5 pawn. I know enough about chess to know why this is completely winning. I also know enough enough about myself to think, you know, one out of I don't know, ten games here, I will actually fail to win. And this annoys me enough to spend more time here calculating to avoid it. I really doubt you're not winning. I mean, yeah. But, I mean, if it starts running, like you imagine some situation where it goes knight, a, knight c7, knight a6 before b3, and then the knight starts jumping and you lose a pawn on the king side somehow and it becomes tricky and blah, blah. I, I take your point. It is completely winning. We both know it's completely winning. But I, I've also, you know, 
blown enough endgames in my in my life to dislike this prospect quite, yeah. quite strongly. Get the point. But also your your great calculator, no, that's how you Yeah. Plus plus I would so trust myself game. to actually find the solution here. Yeah. If I'm playing well that day, I would think, yeah, okay. If it's there, I'll find it. Wesley, where you at? And for Maybe. for those of uh, of our viewers who haven't seen this happen before, the, the current clocks work like the the transmission clock works like what you're observing on the screen right now. He hasn't lost on time. Obviously, it's move forty two, but it won't switch to the second time control until he makes a move. Yep. <clears throat> Yeah, there's limited intrigue left. Yeah. I know you're very much team no increment in the Armageddon, but I don't remember if we ever discussed the other stupid discussion of our time, which is uh, whether setting the clock so it doesn't tell you you reach more 40 is good or bad. That I don't care about. I'm team no increment before move 40. Like... I would give them two hours for 40 moves and then half an hour plus increment for the rest with this time control. Because mm. I think it's more fun and more exciting. And it's the exact same amount of time players can spend on their moves. You just give them a choice to, if they want to, leave yourself with 10 seconds for 10 moves. <laughs> Who are we to stop them from doing Absolutely, that? yeah. Because, yeah, there's definitely, I was always team, you know, don't don't give people information that's not readily available because that sort of isn't in the game but yeah bishop 2 played we yeah i kind of felt that wesley is exactly the kind of a player who just finds bishop 2 here and the game ends um yeah i've 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 met some people who are actually very much in favor of the clock immediately telling you that yeah yeah, yeah you've reached move 40 once you reach move 40 and uh, once again, for, for, for those of the viewers who uh, aren't sure what I'm talking about, there are, with modern uh, electronic clocks, there are two settings you can choose. Uh, one immediately gives you the second time control once you, because it obviously counts the moves while, while, when you press the clock. <laughs> Just in case viewers don't know what a modern electronic clock looks like, this is what That's it. actually a very, very uh, valuable artifact. I haven't seen them in a long time. I don't think it's mine. I found it in my basement recently while looking for a chess clock. It's pretty mm. big. Like, it's seriously big. Yeah. It, I don't the, think it's the ones that I had growing up. Like, we had ones that looked like this, but I think slightly. You probably smaller. played with the, with the, with the Gardet clocks, like the, the, the smaller ones. Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those were common. Yeah. <laughs> mm. yeah, we played like the... It's actually, it used to be kind of reachable, but I think it got moved somewhere. Because, uh, yeah... I don't see it behind me. Uh, the the old, uh, they were called Yentai, Amber, the, the the Soviet chess clocks of my youth. Yeah, the Reza, if you're watching, in the old days we had such things to to push the button after you made your move. Yeah. There's a very yeah. People were kind of asking for story time. Uh, there's a kind of a famous ish story uh, about the Gardet clocks. Um, oh, named after Etienne Gardet? <laughs> very much named after Etienne Gardet, yeah. Uh, when the, I think it was like nine, eight, early in 89, the Kasparov school kids went to the States as a kind of a, you know, cultural visit. And uh, the group was, I mean, many of the people in that group became, became decent players, but like it was, and yeah. Uh, the game is over, so... Sorry, time. Take your time with the story. Or alternatively, move it to tomorrow or whatever. Never. Never. Okay. So basically, but the, the top board of our uh, of our team, I think, was uh, uh, Vladimir Kramnik. There was also some other very strong players, but Vladimir, I think, was the, the, the headliner. And uh, he played a blitz match against uh, Maxim Dlugi. In, uh, we went to New York and then Seattle. And in New York, uh, Maxim Dlugi showed up for one of those things. And... He, they played a long blitz match uh, using the Gardet clocks. And uh, at some point, 
Vladimir said that like I was doing extremely well on the board, but I kept on losing on time. And I couldn't really quite work out how it was happening because like normally a very strong blitz player kind of knows how much time he has left. And it kind of came as a shock every single time. And uh, the, the match because of that wasn't really going that great. And eventually he just kind of stopped playing and looked questioningly at Max and said, Max, what's going on here? And Max said, well, you know, these clocks, I've been practicing. And if you hit the, if you hit the button, at a very precise angle with a certain strength, it actually like takes it takes like 30 seconds of your opponent's clock. Oh, okay, that so he could so he could actually manipulate cool. <laughs> manipulate what the clock settings were, so so to speak. And that was kind of giving him a bit of an unfair advantage. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I, it might be apocryphal, but that's the story as as it was told to me. Um oh, well, you must also have grown up with people. If there's like if there's like half a minute left, pushing the clock extra hard to get that little flag mm, yeah, fall yeah. before ahead of time, no, like which I don't think sure. that's how it works, but didn't stop people from trying for sure. Yeah, but yeah, the, 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 that was a, a kind of a true artist's uh, extension of that very crude theory of just banging it very hard. He was uh, like you, 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 you needed precision and a very like kung fu skill to to pull that off. Anyway, that's uh, impressive. The, the, as usual, very impressive story time with Peter Swindler. Done. Thank me. you so much. Um, thank you for watching today's semi-final games. Wesley So wins his game with the white piece against Tabatabai, therefore putting Tabatabai in a must-win spot tomorrow. While Nakamura and Mamadiarov were taking it slow, we will see if Mamadiarov tomorrow with the white pieces will try to put pressure on Nakamura or they will go straight to tie breaks. Thank you so much for watching. Now that you're done with this, there's a banter blitz with your fun for race later today. Go premium on Chess24 to challenge the Vike and Zay winner 2021, Mr. Fun for race. Also to watch our new video series about the World Championship match 2021 with Peter Heine and Laurent Fresinet, which should be out now. On Chessable, you can purchase Peter's and my expertly done opening courses. You can come back tomorrow to watch us. That's that's all the advice I can give you. All those things are true. Have we mentioned Jordan is devilishly handsome? Not in the last hour. That's He's very, very handsome. Very handsome. Go watch him. Hi everyone, welcome to our new video series. My name is Jan Gustafsson and I'm thrilled to be reunited with fellow Magnus Carlsen's trainers, seconds, Peter Heine Nielsen, Magnus Carlsen's head coach and Laurent Fressinet, Magnus Carlsen's French coach, are both here and we will be going through the World Championship match 2021. Our experiences with it, the games, what we prepared, where we felt things went well, where we felt things didn't go well. Peter, we have different perspectives because we were in different locations. Very much. I'm looking forward to talking to you guys about it because you were in Thailand during all the match and I was in Dubai with uh, Magnus and the you know, his, his non-chess team. So I see it's some kind of debriefing where we will discuss what was the mood in Dubai, what was happening in the technical department in Thailand. And we got to sort of basically compare notes and uh, yeah, get the two kind of inside looks uh, from the match. Very much so. And Laurent, we are actually in your private home. Thanks for having us. It's a big pleasure to, to welcome both of you. And I'm sure it will be interesting to talk to you guys about the match. Likewise. So we hope you guys enjoy the series with our behind the scenes insights. <laughs> See you then. <laughs> <laughs>